Might be the middle of your work week, but the weekend is already here, here in Blacksburg, Virginia. And it's not just any weekend, it's rivalry weekend. Morgantown, West Virginia, just 250 miles away from here. It's tight in the standings as well. Not just Big East implications, but national implications also. Pittsburgh, Miami, tomorrow night on ESPN. You'll see West Virginia and Virginia Tech coming up tonight here on ESPN2. The Black Diamond Trophy is on the line tonight. Three super running backs will be on display next. The opening kickoff shortly. But first, back to the studio and Reese Davis. Steve, thank you very much. We look forward to seeing Avon Coborn against the Untouchables coming up in just a little while. Mike Godfrey, Bob Davey here with me. And guys, let's start and talk about first Virginia Tech. The last couple of weeks, Mike, they really haven't looked like a Frank Beamer coach football team. Reese, I like Virginia Tech in this football game because they're healthy. They had an open date. And when you look at this football team, they're going to play an eight-man front. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage. They're not going to let Colburn run the football. And they're also going to get after the quarterback of West Virginia. They're going to strip him, try to get turnovers, and special teams as a plus. We just saw the Big East standings, Bob. A little surprising to see West Virginia sitting there with only one conference loss. Reese, Rich Rodriguez and West Virginia have quietly made as much of improvement as any football football team in the country. They're a spread huddle, no huddle spread offense, but don't let that fool you. They line up and run the football. They're number two in the country in rushing offense. The reason to tailback Avon Coburn. He's not only West Virginia's all-time leading rusher, he's also the Big East all-time rushing leader. And keep this in mind, Virginia Tech has lost two straight. They've struggled against the run. West Virginia can line up and run the football on Virginia Tech tonight. Forget it. <laughs> well, okay, are you making a pick then? Or are you Virginia Tech. And you? West Virginia's going to line up and run the football. You know what? Worse. I can't believe <laughs> no that you, shot you guys up. worked together. You recruited him. You guys don't agree on anything. No. Well, we'll continue to, we'll continue to work on you. Tech all the way? All right, we'll see if that hokey defense re reinvigorates itself after a couple of uncharacteristic weeks. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll be back during halftime. We'll talk about rivalry week here from these guys and see who their best rivalry is, what their favorite one is, and also talk a little bit about the best one-loss team. This is what's coming up in West Virginia. Three degrees under clear skies. This is Lane Stadium, a near capacity crowd expected in Blacksburg, Virginia. The 12th ranked Hokies of Virginia Tech take on their border rivals, the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Hi, everybody, and good evening, and welcome to College Football Wednesday night with Rod Gilmore. I'm Steve Levy. Back on October 26th, Virginia Tech had eight wins. Here on November 20th, Virginia Tech has eight wins. Frank Beamer told us, hey, we get our personnel back, play the way we're capable, we'll be okay. But we know they'll get the personnel back tonight. Yeah, they lost their mojo, and they want to get it back. And it really starts on defense for them, where they have struggled. Vegas Robinson, their fine linebacker, comes back to help a defense that's given up 476 yards rushing in the last two games. On offense, they get Kevin Jones back. He's been out for a while. He's explosive. An offense that only got 185 yards rushing in their last two games, which they usually do in one game. Speaking of the Jones and keeping up with the Joneses, Kevin Jones, it's Alex Flanagan on the field. Well, Steve, after sitting out a game because of a pulled hamstring, Kevin Jones says that he is ready to go. Coaches say that he has practiced very well all week. Now, Virginia Tech likes to split the amount of carries Suggs and Jones get exactly in half, meaning neither of them get tired. So for West Virginia, one of its biggest challenges tonight will be always facing a fresh back. Alex, they answered the challenges from a season ago when they were three and eight. They've almost flipped it in one whole season. Seven and three right now. They're much more than just Avon Coburn. Well, Bob, David told you about the no-huddle offense. They are physical. They do it not only with Coburn, but with Rashid Marshall, their quarterback, who runs the boot, runs some option, and then they get Quincy Wilson in there, who's also a big-time back, who just doesn't get as many carries as Coburn. And we are set to go. West Virginia has won the toss. They have deferred. And Virginia Tech will receive. Vinny Burns puts it in the air to kick it off. And Lee Suggs returning kicks for the first time all season. Breaks right up the middle. And Suggs has an impact immediately. He's out to the 37. It's a 33-yard kick return to open up. 
And there are Brian Randall and some of the numbers for him against Syracuse in that triple overtime loss. Six touchdowns, five passing, one rushing. And Suggs might be a little worn out. That's the downside of having him return kicks. After the big kick return, he is the starting tailback. Kevin Jones will spell him quite often as Alex told you about earlier. First down and 10, they open in fine field position from the 37, and Brian Randall will throw. Screen out to the right side to Suggs. And might have lost a yard on the play. And the offensive line for Virginia Tech, it's an offensive line that protects for Randall and does a good job for that running game. Davis, Gibson, Grove, Owens, and Martin. And the defensive line for West Virginia Upchurch is the key player there. It is a loss of one on the play. Second down and 11. They open out of the shotgun here with six to snap it. And we'll talk about this most interesting West Virginia defense. Here's Randall on the quarterback draw and he cuts it to the outside. And he gets to the 42-yard line. Brian King brought him down, but not until there was a gain of six. And this is the 3-3-5 defense. The guys in the middle, Wiley and Davis, are the playmakers. And then the secondary for West Virginia, Angel Estrada from the Bronx, New York. One of the big play players there. The 3-3-5, Rod. Well, it's a continuous nickel defense, but really they play with eight men in the box all the time. Like a lot of teams have eight-man fronts, they just keep eight guys near the line of scrimmage at all times. Third down and five. They try to force him into a passing situation, and here it is. Randall with good protection across the middle. A little too high for Ernest Wilford. And flags come flying late. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, if the receiver doesn't catch a ball, well, here we go. it's pass interference, right? Seems like just last week you were telling me about that, Rodden. I know uh, it's been a month since we've done it. Yeah, game. where have you been? <laughs> oh, well, that time, Randall looked at Wilford the entire way, and I thought it was a good, pretty good play made by West Virginia stepping up to make a play on the ball, and Wilford just moved right on into him. And look to the right side of your screen. Here comes Wilford in, runs right into. All right, that's a little pass interference. You got him early. That was Tim Love, 89. He made the contact a little bit early. And actually, he didn't make a play on the ball. I mean, he went right to Wilford. I mean, if he had made a play on the ball, that would have been okay. The penalty's offset. And they'll just do it again, make it another third down and five from the 42. Get out of the shotgun, two receivers to the right, two receivers to the left. Low snap again. Here comes the blitz. Randall steps up and tries to cut it back for the first down. Had to get to the 47 and did not. Dropped at the 46, a gain of three. And I'll bring up a fourth and one. Here comes the punt team. Uh, Jamal Adai made a great recovery, great reaction to get up there on Randall. Because Randall looked like he had enough room to pick up the first down there, Steve. Vinny Burns is back to punt. And he is standing at his 32-yard line. Lance Frazier is back deep for West Virginia. Bit of a low snap there as well. Something to watch for. A nice high punt. Frazier runs up, allows it to bounce, and where's it going to drop? Inside the five, and it's down at the one-yard line. A great job. Great job. Now, remember, Steve, this is not the NFL, so it doesn't matter where your feet are. It's where the ball is. So it did not matter that the return man, that the coverage man that was able to get down there. Darrell Tapp. Actually, and make make sure he got the ball. His feet goes into the end zone, but that's not the rule in college. It's the ball, and the ball never gets into the end zone. First down and ten now from the two-yard line. Out of the eye. When you're in the eye from the two, your tailback is deep in that end zone. They give it to him, the second man through. Avon Colborn, maybe a yard. 
Mikel McKee made the stop. And there's the quarterback, Rashid Marshall, and some of his numbers. More rushing touchdowns than passing touchdowns. And Avon Colborn, the guys in the studio talked about it. Not only West Virginia's all-time leading rusher, but the all-time leading rusher in Big East history. It's some pretty good runners in the Big East. Quincy Wilson is a pretty good runner. Joins Colburn now in the backfield. Second down and 10 from the two. Two receivers out to the right. Inside handoff deep in the end zone. It's Wilson. And he's able to push the pile out maybe to the eight. Nathaniel Adibi made the stop. And the offensive line for West Virginia, you know these guys are good. They've got the number two rush offense in football. Nemo, Burke, Dillo, Sandor, and Brown. And does Kevin Lewis look focused to you or what? He's got the Mike Singletary eyes going. Man. Third down and four. Out of the gun. Here's Marshall rolling to his left. Throwing on the run. Had a man wide open and could not find him. It was Phil Braxton. Well, that's been the problem with the West Virginia offense this year. They, they don't have any balance. They've thrown the ball not very well and it's because of accuracy primarily and they can use some improvement in the passing game and rich rodriguez says you know they work on it all the time but it's just going to take a little time for the maturity of that offense to develop they have the running part of it down just not the passing part of it mark Sazalari is on the punt and really hearing it from the fans of the end zone and just barely got it away and there is a flag down in the end zone considering the pressure got a pretty good punt away and we'll see what the flag is all about. Well, they ran into him. They got contact. They went after that one. And you kind of had the feeling that Virginia Tech might do that. Frank, Frank Beamer told us he likes to use the kicking game as a momentum changer. And why not take a shot early in the ball game when you have them backed up? And they don't get there. A little bit of acting there. Boy, hard it's to a, call that contact, yeah, right? Barely contact. I mean, he got underneath them, but Justin Hamilton looked like he was... The man who maybe brushed the punter, Fazolari, got a, got a piece of him. A little bit early for the Academy Award wow. uh, deal. But, Almost looked uh, like Hunter was down on the ground. Yeah. Fazolari threw his follow-through, landed on top of him and went down. Well, he was definitely underneath him. He didn't get him coming through right off the bat. Well, we have a chance. The Virginia Tech linebackers... Vegas Robinson, such a key in the two losses when they didn't have him. And there you see the secondary for Virginia Tech that is without D'Angelo Hall. Out with back pain. He's the best athlete on the team. They'll miss him tonight. So West Virginia able to maintain possession after the penalty. Another penalty now. Colburn off the screen. And flags flying early here in Blacksburg. Well, I want to go back to that that kick the blo the attempt to block the kick where they called a penalty they hit them with roughing the kicker not running into the kicker a 15 yarder and there's no way that's a 15 yarder referee tonight is dennis hennigan the lineman greg brenner Holding the linesman carl logan on the offense 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul repeat first down Here's another look back at the putt. Maybe the early key play of the game, Rod. Well, just look and see. Is this roughing, or does he simply run into the guy? Now, he doesn't get him coming through. He barely makes any contact. He comes down on. Worley comes down on him. That can't be roughing the kicker. Justin Hamilton, tough break for him. He's on the ground face down, Rod. Well, the only rationale there could be is that you've got a defenseless guy who can't come down and protect himself. That's the only possible rational, rationalization there for the officials to make that call and make it a 15-yarder. I thought Hamilton was pretty defenseless, too. His face was facing the turf. <laughs> After another penalty marker, it's first and 17 now. Marshall, the single setback is Colburn, and Marshall saw something he didn't like, and he'll burn a timeout with 10.50 to play in the first quarter. And we'll take it with him. Scoreless early on from Blacksburg. Welcome you back. This is the first ever Big East game played on a Wednesday night. We've seen some history in the making tonight. First down and 17. 
It's been a penalty-filled start. And Marshall going to keep it and could never turn the corner. Mikhail Baki, and it's a big loss on the play, loss of three. Never got close to turning the corner. Well, and if you're Virginia Tech, you might dial it up a little bit right now because West Virginia has had trouble in long-distance situation, long yardage. Now they're looking at second and 20. They don't really throw the ball down the field that well. They tend to throw quick screens, uh, the jailbreak screen, that sort of thing when they're backed up like this with a lot of distance. Second and 21. Here's Marshall. There's the quick screen Rod was talking about, the Colborn. And you knew it, Rod, and so too did the Virginia Tech defense. Well, you know, Bud Foster, the D coordinator for Virginia Tech, knows what he's doing. The first eight games, look at what they did. They had pretty darn good. Less than 11 points a game. The last two weeks, they struggled. Not only on the ground, but their pass defense and everything. And he knows he needed to get his personnel back. He didn't get D'Angelo Hall back, his fine corner. But he did get Vegas Robinson back, and he does make a difference. Syracuse ran a conference record 100 offensive plays against this Tech defense. Marshall stepping up on the quarterback draw, has running room. He's got the first down, he's got the sideline. And then he is forced out at the 39. Willie Pyle finally got to him. Uh, we talked about Virginia Tech getting their mojo back. It ain't back. That's not Virginia Tech third down defense. They don't miss tackles. They don't give up big plays like this. But they don't often face Rashid Marshall, quarterback with his quickness and his running skills. And he makes a guy miss, gets to the outside, and picks up the first down. Jonathan Lewis had a chance at him and couldn't make the tackle. Marshall is already third in career rushing for West Virginia quarterbacks in history. He's only about 1,500 yards shy of Major Harris. Inside handoff. It's Colborn trying the right side. Vegas Robinson brought him down. That Marshall-Major Harris comparison is out there. Some of that is the style, but both do come from the Pittsburgh area. Both played at the same high school, Brashear High School in Pittsburgh. I, I think Marshall is a quicker runner than Major Harris was. Major Harris was uh, a little stockier, had a better arm, I think, but Marshall has a pretty good arm, too. His accuracy just is not what Major Harris is was. Wilson joins Colborne in the backfield on second and seven. Hand it through to Wilson. Trying the right side. He's across the 45 to the 47. Very close to the first down marker. Well, West Virginia spreads you out. They love to do that. Rich Rodriguez has always done that. He did it when he was at Tulane. He did it at Clemson under Tommy Bowden. And he loves that style of offense. Now, historically, he threw the ball a lot. But he has figured out how to run it here. And he does it out of a fast no huddle. He can go real fast with Jet, where they snap it right now. Indy is a little bit slower, about five seconds off the play clock. And then regular as soon as they want or as long as they want. So this would be regular, this right? This is regular. Uh, this is going to be slower than regular. <laughs> Looks like they're going to audible at the line on third down and two. Need to get to the 49. And they pitch it to Colborn and he fumbled the football. Looked like it might have got off the fullback's face mask. Mo Fofana was trying to block out in front of him. Uh, Mo Fofana comes in and he is their lead blocker on their tall sweep and their isolation play. He's 260 pounds, but he gets some of that big size in the way there. Actually, it's not his fault. It's Rashid Marshall. He pitched it to Fafana, and he had to get it back to his running back instead. High snap, Fazilari punts it away. It'll bounce and be downed at the 26-yard line. You know, you said Fofana goes 260 pounds. We were told that would be the case after the team dinner last night. But he went to the dinner at 250 pounds. ESPN 2's College Football Wednesday Night. Brought to you by Wendy's Late Night Pickup Window. Where you can eat great, even late. Let's look at the Black Diamond Trophy, which is up for grabs tonight. First presented in 97, and as with so many of these trophies, but not 1897. This was... Relatively new trophy. That's okay. 1997. That's all right. That's okay. It's a trophy. Of course, uh, the region's history, the coal industry for both of these two very proud football programs and schools. And uh, West Virginia's only had the trophy once, Rod, in that first year. And Virginia Tech has won it in a few years since. Lee Suggs off tackle. Pick up a few. There are going to be all kind of trophies talked about this week and this weekend. It's, uh, it's a big rivalry weekend. 
Which rivalry would you be focusing on? <laughs> I don't know. I might take Stanford, a look out Stanford west. Have a, Stanford have a Cal bye Bay. this week? Are they off this it's week? The no? It's the axe. It's the axe. Ah. It's the axe. And uh, Cal hasn't seen it in oh, about eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. Is that like the Stanley Cup? You get to, each player gets to take it home one day, nothing like that? All right, yeah. we could arrange that. Second down and five. Good play action. Rolling to his right and finding a man. Randall is Ernest Wilford. And Wilford is across midfield. I think the defense really bought into that fake and led to the 21-yard gain. Well, that's because you can get some running out of Randall. He can do that for you, but he does throw the ball so well on the move. And he did that against Syracuse last week. Watch him here. He gets pressured a little bit by David Upchurch. Still gets the ball out there to Wilford. And Wilford had a huge week last week against Syracuse. 279 yards receiving. First down and 10. They're across midfield. And they open out of the eye. This time they do hand it off to Suggs. And it's a gain of two on the play. We still await Kevin Jones' first appearance of the game. There is a flag on the play. Ben Collins made the stop. That's kind of a late flag. I, I don't know if there was some extracurricular activity after the tackle, but it came in very late. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense, personal foul on the offense, the penalties offset, second down. Uh, second set of offsetting penalties yeah. tonight. Yeah, they're, they're trying to control this game, the referees are. They're, they know it's a rivalry game. They don't want it to get out of hand. You're going to find probably a little pushing and shoving at the end of this thing. And there it is right there. Shot to the face mask, pushing. That looked like it was the, uh, Luke Owens who was involved in it along with Grant Wiley of West Virginia. I don't know if you ought to mess with Grant Wiley. But you want to bother him. I mean, he's the big playmaker, the top tackler for West Virginia. Maybe get him thinking about something else. Out of the eye. They offset the penalties. Quick throw is caught. Doug Eastlick, a juggling catch, and he's inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. That's a great catch by Eastlick. Not a good pass by Brian Randall. You want to put the ball out there and give your receiver or your running back a chance to do something with it. The only reason Eastlick did something with that one was because he made a great one-handed catch. But you got to put that ball on his numbers and let him turn up the field. Virginia Tech coaching staff told us he is your typical Virginia Tech fullback, but we try to keep him happy. We'll throw him a bone every once in a while. That was the bone. And that was the bone <laughs> right there. And he made a great catch on it. Maybe they should throw to him more. Third down and three. Off the play action. Plenty of room for Randall, and he sees it also. Cuts it upfield, and he's down inside the 30. The football came loose, but he was already down. Jermaine Thaxton finally brought him down after the gain of 11, but it's first down yardage for Randall. Well, they're picking up yardage, but the striking thing to me, Steve, is that this is not Virginia Tech's personality. I mean, they're not a team that, that likes to throw the ball down the field an awful lot. That's not what they've done historically. They've pounded you, pounded you, play action pass, and done that. But because people have been loading up on them and because they were banged up in the backfield, they've gone to opening the ball up more, and Randall has responded. First down and 10. Inside the 30. Randall, the option gives it to Sutton. There's plenty of running, and there's the burst of speed. Forget about it. Touchdown! Lee Suggs, 28 yards. They execute the option perfectly. And Virginia Tech is on the scoreboard. Hey, any doubts about Lee Suggs being back? He turned on the Jets because Brian King had the angle and he outran him. Outran him to the corner. And folks, that is history. That is an NCAA record, a 32-year-old record that has fallen. Bill Burnett of Arkansas, sorry, you're out of the record books. Lee Suggs, you are in. A touchdown in 24 consecutive games. Cardo Worley on for the extra point. And it is up and it is good. Lee Suggs, again, think about it, worth repeating, has found the end zone now. NCAA record 24 consecutive games. A history-making night here in Blacksburg, Virginia. A 32-year-old NCAA record held by Bill Burnett of Arkansas has gone away. Congratulations to Lee Suggs. A touchdown in 24 consecutive games. Rod, put that into perspective. 24 consecutive games reaching Pater. That's 
That's why those records are there 32 years. That, that is ridiculous. That's just sick. I mean, a guy that is being keyed on every week, getting paid it. John Malarup will put it in the air. Braxton and Smith are back deep. And it will be Derek Smith, but you hear the whistles and flags and things of that nature. Under five to go here in the first. Been a penalty filled first quarter. It's a rivalry game. Wednesday night has people out of sync as well. Maybe. Well, rivalry, they fight. You know? Prior to the kick, <laughs> delay game on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Ball will be kicked from the 30-yard line. Not a real physical type penalty, Rod. <laughs> delay of game in a rivalry game. But wow. How, how do you do that? They're really going at it. <laughs> delay of game. Intimidation is, is very present. Well, we got the key game in the Big East tonight, and then, oh, by the way, it's a pretty good sized game tomorrow night. Number one ranked Miami against a very good Pittsburgh team tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. And you can see that tomorrow night over on ESPN. I think folks have gotten Miami's attention. I, I think Miami will show up big time ready to play tomorrow night. Seems that whenever somebody says, hey, Miami might lose, Miami gets focused, they get in there, and they get it going. So that would be a good one. Pittsburgh's got something going. I like Fitzgerald as a wide receiver. Hey, uh, here in Blacksburg, they're pretty well aware just how good a team Pittsburgh Ooh, is. Yes, indeed. Talk about your rivalry. Both of these schools you're watching tonight with West Virginia and Virginia Tech. Derek Smith not even going to try it. He'll take any five yards deep into the end zone. And let's look back at the history-making touchdown. Well, keep your eyes on Eastlick, the fullback. He's going to get in here and get a great block. And that's going to make it impossible for anybody to come from the inside and make the play. Watch him come through there. Freeze it right there. Look at that great block. No one to pursue to the outside. Lee Suggs, all he has to do is outrun the angle. Brian King can't get there. Great speed. Nicely done. And that's what you do. You, you go over and you sit with the guy who made the block to let him know you like him and you appreciate him and you want him to keep blocking like that. I got a feeling Michael Vick will be applauding on his television set tonight. <laughs> Hard to imagine. Michael Vick should only be a senior here at Virginia Tech. How good would they be? Inside handoff and then a reverse to Travis Garvin, the wide receiver. And he's able to turn the corner before finally being pushed out at about the 35. It's a gain of 15. And it's dangerous on the sidelines. He got a big hit on somebody over there. It looks like he got an assistant coach or somebody. You got to be alert. Watch the end of this play. Watch this. He comes out. Bam. Oh, he got a ref. He got a ref. That's one of the, the extra refs on the sidelines. He got a referee. Hope he's okay. He took a pretty good shot. He wasn't expecting it. See if uh, Alex can get us any further information as the official is being attended to on the sideline. On first down and 10 now. Coming up on four and a half to play in the first quarter. Fake the handoff. Marshall will take it himself. And he's out to the 39-yard line. The key made the stop. One of the great rivalry games. And these are two schools who have more than one big rival. But this is certainly always a highlight of the schedule. Virginia Tech, prior to their two losses, they were number three in the nation, dropping all the way down to number 12. Here's Quincy Wilson. Forget about it. It's a loss on the play. Back to the 35-yard line. Well, and this is not what we've seen all night out of the Virginia Tech defense. West Virginia has moved the ball. They stopped themselves on their last drive with a fumble that they recovered on a key third and two. But they have been able to move the ball against Virginia Tech. They've gotten some big plays. Not enough to get in the end zone yet, though. Coles Colas, the Lions some around these parts of Corey Moore. Guy can bench press 390. The goal of a 4-4 speed. That's a pretty good combination. Third down and 10. Marshall directing traffic. Here's the pressure. It's picked up nicely and a pass across the middle to Derek Smith. Smith getting secondary blocks. And to the 10 and he's finally dropped there. The quick hitter in the middle of the field. 
And Derek Smith is only brought down by Jimmy Williams, or that was six. Well, and that's not a lot of what we've seen out of West Virginia in the past. And Rich Rodriguez said, hey, we're going to have to throw the ball into the middle of the field, something we haven't done a lot of. It's just a quick slant against man coverage, blown assignment, and Derek Smith is then off. He makes a great cut that almost gets him into the end zone. That cut right there. On a third down and 10, Derek Smith picks up 56. Made it look pretty easy. Go back to the running game now, and Avon Colborn trying to turn the corner. He's got a step, reaches across. Is he in? Yes! Touchdown, West Virginia! Avon Colborn answers the touchdown by Lee Suggs. And we're an extra point away from being tied at seven. And that is as fine a nine-yard run as you're going to see. I mean, he showed you some strength, some power, some quickness, and vision. There was no hole inside. And he spotted it to the outside, jumped outside, spotted it again, gets more outside, and picks up the touchdown. Todd James for the extra point. And puts it through. We are tied at seven with 2.45 left. The fine touchdown run, but really the big play was on third down and 10. Little inside slant to Derek Smith that he took 56 yards. And then it was Avon calling the end zone. A nine yard run. And with the PAT, we're tied at seven. Late in the first quarter in Blacksburg. The Virginia Tech drive, 72 yards on only six plays, capped off by Suggs. The Colborne touchdown, capped off an 80-yard drive, only five plays. I'll see your touchdown, Yeah, and I'll match it. But big plays on both scoring drives, not taking a whole lot of time off the clock either. Here's Todd James to kick it away, and Lee Suggs is back. And Suggs from the one. Again, D'Angelo Hall, one of their big kick return players. Not in lineup tonight. Out to the 27-yard line, and Tech will take over from there. Tondi Smith had the special team stuff. It'll be interesting to see how Virginia Tech responds. Remember, we've seen them get Randall to the outside and throw the ball down the field. They're going to have to get Jones into the lineup and get going with him. Maybe he'll show up this series. This would be about the time you'd see him. And he is, Rod. As if you called for him, and there he is. Kevin Jones makes an appearance in the football game. He's got Eastlick in front of him, and a quick pass. The screen out to the wide receiver is Richard Johnson, a gain of two. We send it down to the field, and Alex Flanagan. Well, Steve, another person that Virginia Tech is missing, defensive back Michael Crawford, a few weeks ago, he learned that he likely has lymphoma. Now he had a biopsy done nine days ago. He still has not gotten the results back from that, waiting for those results to determine how he will treat the cancer. He says he's praying that maybe it was a misdiagnosis, which, again, is not likely. But he says he's here tonight because he would like to play. He'd rather be with his teammates than at home by himself, Steve. Alex, thank you. The screen to Jones. Second effort by him, and he's out to the 31-yard line. The coaching staff told us about Crawford, and they couldn't, couldn't say it enough. What a tremendous kid from a great family, and people around here were really concerned it could have a real negative effect on the team. But Frank Beamer said he has been so positive throughout. Beamer's ready to cry, and Crawford's got a smile on his face somehow, Rob. Yeah, you know, but I think it has had an effect on the team. I, I think when that happens to a guy that you like, the rest of your teammates start to question, really, how important is football? And when you lose a couple games in the process, you kind of go, eh, okay, we got to refocus and find it. But life puts things in perspective for you. And I'll tell you what, whether he plays or not, great to not only see him in the jersey, but to see him in full pads and ready to go if need be. Here's Randall. Got some pressure from behind, and he is dropped at the 31. James Davis nailed him from behind. Davis and Wiley make most of the stops on this West Virginia defense. Well, Randall was trying to wait for his receiver to come over, come open into the flat. He took a little bit long, couldn't find him, and thus the fourth down. Low snap. Vinnie Burns had a 52-yard punt earlier. Here's Lance Frazier. Stepped up and stepped into at the 30. And that's where they will take over. We've got college basketball for you tonight. The Owens Corning preseason NIT continuing here on ESPN.
two. That's Xavier, 11th ranked in the country. And who are they playing there, Rod? Hey, Stanford, oh, not, not ranked for the first time in I don't know how long, but Mike Montgomery is going to have to coach up those youngsters. You see Stanford is still remaining in that preseason NIT and Kansas. Oh, they look good the other night. Yes, they did. They look just unbelievable. The winner of tonight's game will make it at least to Madison Square Garden for the semifinals. On first down and 10. Hand off to Quincy Wilson breaking some tackles. And he's across midfield and down at the 47. Billy Hardy broke him, brought him down. Everybody talks about Colborne, but Wilson, our co coach told us, might be faster and stronger. Well, you just don't walk into Blacksburg and strut down the field, the middle of the field with your running game, unless you're West Virginia and you run a quick hitter with a guy who is not Avon Colborne, but is more powerful and a little bit faster. Coaching staff told us they run the exact same plays for the two backs. There is no drop-off. And you see what we're talking about. It's Wilson again, spinning out of tackler's arms. And he's forced out about the 15, rather, the 19-yard line. And Quincy Wilson rather impressive. And, and this is, frankly, a bit stunning. I mean, after two weeks of seeing Virginia Tech get pushed around in the running game, you thought that with getting Vegas Robinson back, they'd be a little bit tougher at the point of attack and that West Virginia could not pound the ball inside. But they have. Personal foul on the defense. Penalty is half the distance from the end of the run. First down. And that certainly will add to it. This Virginia Tech defense gave up 604 yards of offense against Syracuse. That is the most since BC piled on 617 against them back in 93. Well, part of what's going on is that it's a young defense. It's a young team. I mean, and they're playing a lot more guys because of the injuries to Hall and Robinson was out and Crawford missing. And sometimes they blow assignments, which is why you'll see a big play pop like that last one. First down and goal from the nine. And why not? Avon Colborne trying to get there and could not. Brought down probably right back at the nine yard line. That after Wilson had gains of 24 and 27 on successive carries. Well, that one is good preparation. I mean, Bud Foster reminded his guys, when you see 46 coming to the ball game, they tend to go toss sweep, they tend to go isolation play, and so they were looking for the toss sweep. Quarter number one is complete in Blacksburg, Virginia. Lee Suggs has the first score of the game for Virginia Tech, and Avon Colborn was there to answer. Seven all after one. Steve Levy, Rod Gilmore, Alex Flanagan. College football Wednesday night here on ESPN2 as we open up quarter number two. In a 7-7 game. And great field position on second down and goal now for West Virginia looking to take the lead on the 12th ranked Hokies. They fake the handoff to Colborne and Marshall kept it himself and picks up a short gain on the play. I think he missed the hole. And he, he had a lane just to the right. And that's where you want him to see it, bounce it outside, and go ahead and get out there. I mean, we saw great vision by Coburn on his touchdown run. But we didn't see great vision that time by Marshall on that run. Third down and goal now. Things tighten up, and the crowd gets loud. And again, Marshall will keep it. This time he finds Pater. Touchdown. Better vision there. Great vision. Great vision. Nice cutback. That is great vision. You know, and he also made a great decision because that is a play in which he has to decide whether to give up the ball or keep it. It's almost an option play. It really is an option play. He can give it to Coburn or keep it himself. He chose to keep it. Right decision, good vision to see the hole and cut back in. And that is something the coaching staff told us. He makes great decisions on the field. Hardly ever turns it over, picks the right spots, and he did there. Todd James adds the extra point. And it is 14 to 7 in favor of the visiting Mountaineers. Uh, Steve, take a look at how he rides this ball a little bit. He's trying to think, do I pitch it, do I pitch it? No, he decides, makes the cut back inside. Nicely done. Here you see, he's got the option to pitch it. And there you see a missed tackle coming up inside. Mikhail Baki misses it. 
Now take a look whether he gets the ball across the plane before his knee is down. Ah! Ball breaks the plane, it looks like, from that angle, but his knee was down at about the one-yard line. But it looked like the ball broke the plane from that angle. It didn't seem like there was much argument on the Virginia Tech side of things. West Virginia has 117 rushing yards already. They're averaging 11 yards per rush and tearing up that Tech defense. I'm telling you, this is, this is unreal. I mean, this stretch of time for the Virginia Tech defense, three weeks, three games like this, unbelievable. 14-7, and a bit of a surprise brewing here early on. In quarter number two, James will put it in the air, and Suggs will race over to get it, straddling the goal line, and look to make a move from there. Gets out to the 18-yard line, and that's where they'll open. Great Big East action for you tonight, and quite frankly, gets even bigger tomorrow night. 19th-ranked Pittsburgh will be in Miami, Take on the top-ranked Hurricanes at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. And a look at the Big East standings. How strange is that to see Pittsburgh atop the Big East standings, Rod? Well, it's not strange to them. It's I think wild. I think everybody else across the country figured Miami was on top, but no, Pitt knocked off Virginia Tech. Then again, they played one fewer game to this point in conference, so they obviously could even out. We'll see what happens tomorrow night. Little option, and it's Lee Suggs. Did a good job just hanging on to the ball and pitched that time. Yeah, he did, but I'll tell you what, Eastlick is having a night. I mean, he had a one-handed catch. He's had three tremendous blocks. He had a great block on that last play. I mean, right now, he's, he's as dominating a presence on the field as anybody on that Virginia Tech offense. Doug Eastlick, the fullback from New Jersey, the junior. He and Suggs are the only skill offensive players to start every single game this season. He's got that helmet all scratched up, as you would expect yeah, sure. from your fullback. Exactly. Lee a couple of pretty good running backs. And uh, here's Suggs again. And uh, that time he stopped almost immediately by Ben Lynch. As we look back at game track, some of the highlights and a record-setting night for Lee Suggs. Oh, we saw a couple of great runs. This one by Suggs. Great Jets at the end to outrun Brian Keene to get him to the end zone. And then another great run, a shorter one, by Ivan Colburn as he just dishes to the outside, squeezes in there. Great vision, great feet. And we're on, we're going to see three or four great running backs tonight. Are you surprised we have not seen more of Jones? Actually, I am. I am, too. Again, it's Suggs carrying the football, has the first down. Unless Jones, and it's likely, is not 100% had missed the previous seven quarters of this game coming in with that high ankle injury. Well, you know, he had the hammy also, the hamstring thing, and the idea was to get him in the game, the third series. He was only in for the three plays. They brought him back out. Now he's back in. You want to keep him warm. You want to get him going before that hamstring, you know, tightens up or anything. You want to find out if he can play a whole game. See if they give him the football here on first down and 10 from the 30. The play action, Brian Randall. He's thinking about throwing it deep. And great touch on that ball to Ernest Wilford in front of one defender and just over another defender. And Randall, a nice ball there. Well, I think Wilford adjusted that route. I think they were expecting him to run a go, a stutter step go. He took off and saw that they were laying way off, and he just stopped. And Randall read it and threw the ball to him. But how happy are you to see Wilford make plays? I mean, this guy is getting it done. Look at this. Four touchdowns against Syracuse. Randall had over 500 yards passing. Yeah, not bad. And Wilford is clearly a guy that you root for. The coaching staff told us how proud they are. What a tribute to him it is after he able to bounce back after a very difficult drop in the key game against Miami last season. Kevin Jones, a little stutter step out to the 46-yard line. Gain a three on the play. Ben Lynch brought him down. And that drop that you were talking about was a two-point conversion against Miami when Miami was undefeated. And had he made the catch, it probably would have sent the game into overtime. And so he received a lot of grief about that. But he worked hard in the offseason, came back this year, and is having a phenomenal year, which is why the coaching staff is so proud of him. He is so much the go-to guy when they go to the passing game. He has more than twice as many catches as anybody else on the team. So clearly he has regained any confidence that he might have lost. Again, Randall the drop and the throw, puts it on the money. It's Sean Witten's first catch of the game. He's inside the 40, and Brian Randall 
is six for six passing run. Well, we're starting to see the maturation of a quarterback. I mean, he was a the guy they didn't know if he could get it done. Then last week he had a breakout game. You know, they didn't know how much they could rely on him to throw the ball. Tonight, we're not seeing the deep ball and the fade route, sort of the easy throws he had last week. He's throwing the ball in between defenders tonight, and that's the growth you're seeing in him as a quarterback. On first down and 10 now. And the pitch to Jones on the right side. Stutter step, and he is dropped at the 40, and he dropped the football as well. And West Virginia has it. It's recovered by Jermaine Thaxton. The hit put on by James Davis to force the fumble. But was he down? And the question in my mind is, was he down before the ball came out? I mean, he watch him stutter step here. Nope, he's not down. Clearly not down. You know, Davis, one of their big play guys, gets a hand in there to knock it out. That's a pretty good play. There's a little love on the sideline. Todd Graham is the co-defensive coordinator along with Jeff Castillo. On first down and 10, Avon Colburn is hitting the backfield. Nathaniel Adibi made the stop. Now there you see the turnover difference from West Virginia from 98th to second. I mean, do you have to look any further, Rod, as to why they were three and eight a season ago, and right now they're seven and three? Well, you just don't do that. You don't make a change like that. The running game and the good play out of Rasheed Marshall quarterback has really led to that. Second down and 12. And the throw. Marshall skipped it to Derek Smith. It's funny, the West Virginia running backs, the guys like Quincy Wilson and Avon Coburn, they talked about their own defensive unit. They said they're a bunch of strippers. Now, <laughs> well, now, wait a second. Now, they mean strip the football, but they said they're so focused on that in practice, that actually helps Wilson and Coburn hang on to the football because their defense does such a good job, yeah. and the opponents are finding that out. Well, but their defense does that, but they also make good tackles. They don't get so focused on stripping the ball that they miss tackles. Third down and 12. What do you know about stripping? Stripping the football, that's all I know. Here's the throw, Marshall across the middle, completes, and it's just enough for the first down of Derek Smith. Smith, a gain of 13, he's got the two biggest catches in the game, Rod. Yeah, but if you follow Rich Rodriguez's history, he can develop quarterbacks. I mean, he had Sean King at Tulane, had Woody Danzler at Clemson. He's got a guy now who looks like he could be that kind of a guy going forward. Nice throw to Smith again. You know, Smith, once you make a big play, maybe you find a guy who's got a hot hand, you keep going back to him. And Smith, a former walk-on, looks like he might have a hot hand tonight. When he had Sean King, King set an NCAA passing efficiency record, this mind-boggling number. That ball's batted up in the air and caught. Marshall was able to catch it himself. It was knocked aside by Brandon Manning. But you don't catch that ball. You bat it down. You know, you bat it down, you come back and play second down instead of putting yourself in a hole where now you have second down and about 14. Now, great athleticism here. Watch Marshall. Oh, oh, there it is. But, you know, that's his instinctive reaction. But he'll learn you knock that down. You don't catch that ball. And he'll find his name in the receiving part of the box score tomorrow as well. That's yeah, a catch. I can do it all. Throw it to myself. Loss of three on the play, second and 13. He's trying to do it himself again, Marshall. And Nathaniel Adibi brought him down. Hey, just back to Rodriguez when he worked with Sean King at Tulane. King had 36 touchdowns and just six interceptions. That's a nice ratio, that, right? That's not bad. And the other thing that Sean King did, he ran the ball. He ran this offense. I mean, they ran the boots. They ran the option. They did all that stuff. And Woody Danzler got the nickname of Woodshed from Reese Davis because he ran this <laughs> offense and ran it well. Third down and 14. An innovative, aggressive offense. Under the guidance of Rich Rodriguez, just 39 years old, in his second year at his alma mater. Here's Marshall on the run. And out into the flat, the pass just slightly behind his intended target, Avon Coburn. And there is a flag down after the incomplete pass. You know, if you're Virginia Tech, the scary thing is that your defense, they know what's coming. I mean, they're well prepared. They're getting in the right place, but they're not making plays. That's the scary thing. They're not being tricked here. I mean, as we sit up here, we see the plays coming by their tendencies. We know 
Virginia Tech knows, but they're being manhandled by West Virginia, who's a little bit more physical right now. Ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Frank Beamer in his 16th season. Just don't hear that very often. Those numbers, a coach at one place for that long, he, he he's on track to be like the next Joe Paterno. He has averaged nine wins a season for the last nine seasons. And in fact, only Joe Paterno, Bobby Bowden, and Fisher DeBerry have been in their spots longer. Blocked! It's Beamer ball right there! The punt is blocked. It's picked up at the 15-yard line. Wilford, the big play receiver, looked like he got a hand on it. I, I don't know if it was Wilford or Williams. You know, the freshmen, they, built, they were 18 and 19. They're both similar. Who comes up the middle? It is Wilford. But look who's there. 19 Williams. It's the freshman who's about 6'3", there to try to pick up the ball. They're like twins in size. And those guys came right up inside. And Frank Beamer uses special teams and blocks as a momentum changer. And that did it right there. Gave a little bit of life to Virginia Tech. And they've been slumping in that department lately. Just five blocks coming in. That's number six. And Lee Suggs, with the crowd riled up, is knocked down. Maybe a loss on the play. Well, but this is what Frank Beamer told us. He really believes that. He believes that momentum is a very, very key factor in ball games, and that you can't wait for momentum. You have to create it. And you can create it in special teams. And if you're not aware, we say Beamer ball, so that's obvious. Frank Beamer does handle the special teams, which is rather, with rather unfamiliar territory for most head coaches. Yeah. Second down and 11. Ryan Randall under pressure and dropped out of the 22. Tim gave him some love. Tim Love from Ohio. You know, on the special teams note, I thought it was interesting the way that Beamer reacted yesterday when we were talking to him about special teams and, and their problems lately. <laughs> I mean, he took it so personally. I mean, he started, he looked so pained. He did. We asked him about the kicking game. He took the glasses off, took a deep sigh, wiped his brow. I mean, it really it was, it was painful <laughs> watching him try to answer about the kicking. They've really struggled in terms of field goal kicking. In fact, they've missed seven of their last nine kicks. They've used three different kickers this season. And a timeout will be taken by Beamer and Virginia Tech, and he doesn't look particularly pleased right now. 6.57 to play here in the first half. Mountaineers on top, 14-7. Back for a big play, third down and 12 from the 17. As the Hokies look to go in for the game time score. Well, it looks like they may have single coverage on the bottom with Wilford. That might not be a good matchup for West Virginia. See if Brian Randall spotted that. Randall's rolling the other way to his right. And flags are down. Prior to the snap, timeout, West Virginia. That is their second good timeout job, of Rod. the half. Good, Rod, good job. <laughs> hey, they didn't like it either, huh? Maybe they saw <laughs> what you were talking about. And we'll step out. West Virginia burns a timeout on defense. We'll be right back with a third down play. ESPN 2's College Football Wednesday Night. Brought to you by Bowflex. Visit Bowflex online at www.bowflex-endzone.com. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but they might have to take down some of those letters. We got an email at Sports Center. He wants to be Mike Vick, Mike not Vick? Michael. Might have Mike? to take the E A L out of Michael. Ah, so you change your name after you get there? That's pretty much the way it is, right? You change your name on Gilmore. Me, <laughs> <laughs> <Lee> V. <laughs> Wilford have single coverage again, Rod? Uh, looks like they're doubling him in and out. Here's Randall, the throw, looking for Wilford. And when he turned around, the defender was in front of him. And in the pass behind him, Brian King was there on the coverage. And again, field goals have been an issue. Carter Worley 
Missed a couple of game-winning, would have been game-winning field goals at Syracuse. Missed from 46 yards away. And then again, a makeable field goal from 36 yards away. And this one here will be from 34. As a team, they've missed seven of their last nine. But Worley pumps this one through, and that's got to come as a huge relief to both Carter Worley and his head coach, Frank Beamer. He got his mojo back. Yes, he did. 14-10 here in Blacksburg. The last time West Virginia won here in Blacksburg was back in 1992. That was also the last time Virginia Tech lost three straight regular season games. They are on the verge of doing that as well here tonight. A four-point game, under seven to go in the first half. Well, West Virginia doesn't want to lose James Davis. You saw him on the sideline there. He limped off the field after that field goal, and obviously everybody hopes he can get back in the ballgame. One of the real big playmakers. Not near defense. Derek Smith and Phil Braxton are back deep at the goal line to get the kick from John Mahler. Mahler puts it in the air. Derek Smith will take it from the six. Across the 20. And will not get to the 30. Let's check in with our long lost pal, Reese Davis. Reese. Steve, clearly that was a mistake on the kickoff because what you do when you return a kickoff is lateral it a lot. 20 years ago today, Kevin Mullen going in for Cal against Stanford. The trombone player Gary Terrell gets run over it. Oh, wait. Who's this? Rod Gilmore arguing his case. Hey, Gilmore, weren't you on the kickoff coverage team that year? All right. You know, Reese, why do you want to ruin a perfectly good night? Right. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't plead my case well enough. But you know something? <laughs> the Stanford Axe? Yeah. It's 2019 Stanford win that year. Is that right? Yeah. Hadn't changed. His first down and 10. Inside handoff to Avon Coburn, making some people miss, and he should have enough for the first down. And, uh, Rod, I, I feel bad. If, if I would have known prior to this, I would have gotten oh. you a gift or a card, uh, so yeah. a happy anniversary. Oh. 20 years ago today. What? You get stopped on the street like once a month, or how often does that come up uh, in your only personal Only with guys, life? guys like you. That, that's all. <laughs> but you know, seriously, it was a great play for college football. Not a great play for the guys who were in that locker room with me. Not good for the coach of our team that time, Paul Wigan. But uh, we understand its place in history in college football. Rasheed Marshall across midfield. Another first down for West Virginia. Hey, you got to be known for something. Hey, but like I said, <laughs> yeah. if that's what Cal is known for, right? Like 20 years of football. Right? Well, you know, hey. They can have that? They can have it. We'll keep winning the axe. All right. <laughs> Does it feel like 20 years? <laughs> Please. <laughs> feel like yesterday? <laughs> it feels like 100. I hear about that thing <laughs> every few weeks. First down and 10. What a good drive by West Virginia. Have to be impressed with the Mountaineer offense to this point. Three seconds to snap it, and they get it off. Inside handoff, flags fly. Pretty good fake as he gave it to Coburn. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Again, there is a marker down. And that'll push West Virginia back. You know, the one thing we haven't seen from West Virginia is the hurry-up speed in, in the no-huddle. We haven't seen jet and we really haven't seen much of Indy. We've just seen the regular get to the line of scrimmage, call your play, and get your formation and get going. But if they want to change the pace, control the tempo, Rich Rodriguez will say, let's go jet, let's go jet. And that means you snap the ball within two or three seconds of the time that you line up. And Illegal if you go motion Indy. on the offense, five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage, repeat first down. Now, Indy is not as fast as Jet. Everybody knows that. Sure. A jet is faster than Indy, right? An Indy racing car. Exactly. Yeah. So for Indy, you go five or seven seconds, and you snap. Got it? Now, I, I certainly I understand it. Okay. Uh, could it have anything to do with the fact that you're leading in the football game? Does that change if you're playing from behind? Well, I, I think it's just tempo. It's the feel of the game. If you like where you are, you keep running. If you want to get a surprise, you want to change the tempo, you go with it. First and 15, taking their time out of the gun. Marshall, throw it. And completing to Aaron Neal, his first catch. And he is very close to first down yardage. 
Brandon Manning brought him down. Let's see, this is, this is regular. They get to the line of scrimmage, they get their formation, they get the play call. Play clock starts now. If this were Jet, they'd be going right now. Avon Colborne is split out all the way to the right. And nobody's on it. Nearly out of your picture, bottom of your screen. And Marshall wasn't looking that way. Instead, he went to Derek Smith. And he's able to complete down to the 21. There was a flag down. And I think, was it Colborne involved? Yeah, down it was the field? Yeah, yeah. Pretty good decoy, though, where they line him out, out to the right. Well, a couple things on that play. One, missed tackles by Virginia Tech. Three of them on that play. And then Colborne goes down the field and takes a shot at Ronell Whitaker. Now, Whitaker is a talker. Whitaker might have said something to kind of get him going. Whitaker is known as the preeminent trash After talker in this conference. Over. Personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. It will be first down. Now, it may not have been this play, but Whitaker might have done some talking. Look, turns his back to him. Now, Coburn just doesn't go up and do that. I mean, something had to happen right. earlier in the ball game to make him feel, I'm going to get my shot. That is not in Coburn's personality whatsoever. In fact, the coach and staff told us on senior night prior to their final home game, uh, he had the best speech ever. He is all about the guys. He's all about... Rodriguez told us he was more concerned being accepted by his teammates than being an All-American. And that is really what he is all about. Here's the same formation. Quincy Wilson this time is lined up the bottom of your screen. They covered him right. this time. They covered him, though, this time. There's the snap. And again, he's looking to the left, Marshall. And trying to find Derek Smith. Incomplete pass. Uh, Quincy Wilson, he went out and took a shot <laughs> at Whitaker. Maybe it's that spot on the field, Rod. <laughs> and, and Whitaker is still trying to get up. I mean, it was a legitimate block. But make no mistake about it, they're not taking anything from Whitaker. And Wilson put him down. Whitaker and D'Angelo Hall give you a lot of presence or, dare I say, attitude back there in the defensive backfield. No Hall tonight. So Whitaker's by himself in that department and feeling some of the brunt of it. Second down and 10, and there go the flags. Yeah, Torrey Johnson jumped. Tight end. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remain second down. I bet they called Torrey Johnson's number in the huddle. And he thought, I'll get a quick release here. Got a little excited. Torrey Johnson has just five catches on the season. Two of those, though, have gone for touchdowns. Yeah, they typically only go to him down in the red zone, inside the twin. Three penalties already on this drive. Backs him up for a second and 15. Just on their side of midfield. Marshall lofts one. Sideline, and it is incomplete. Derek Smith was the intended target. Garnell Wilds was there on the coverage. Wilds had three interceptions against Syracuse, tying the school and conference record. Okay, now why didn't we have pass interference on that play? Now watch the end. Watch the push off there. Right hand, push off a little bit. No catch. Now if the defensive guy right. had pushed off just a little touch, that would have been flat. I, really, I can't answer that question. You put me in a most the witness, difficult spot. The witness may answer the question. <laughs> Third and 15. Marshall 7 of 12 for 92 yards. Going to put up for the 13th time. Finds Quincy Wilson. And he stumbles down across midfield. Out to the 43-yard line and pounds the turf. Gain of 8 on the play. West Virginia does a very nice job of keeping their defense off the field. And they run the clock. They get a number of plays going. You rarely see them go 3 and out. That allows your defense to kind of collect itself, figure out what it's going to do, come in resting. Actually, you really could say that about both of these schools, Rob. They are 1-2 in time of possession in the Big big East. On fourth and seven, they're going for it. And well, Fasolari will kick it out of that formation. And the punt, and let's see where it will be down. It is dropped at the one. And that's where Tech will take over. Mike Page 
was the first man down there. It goes a 42-yard punt. We mentioned, of course, Michael Vick, who would only be a senior right now at Virginia Tech. And more on the Vick last name. Here's Alex. Hey, Steve. Well, to get ready for West Virginia's quarterback, the defense practiced against Marcus Vick all week long in their scrimmage. You know, Marcus Vick, an amazing scrambler of his own. People are very excited. You'll notice, though, he is not wearing Michael Vick's number. He opted not to. Kevin Jones has that number seven. A lot of high expectations for Marcus Vick. First down and ten. Handoff to number seven, Kevin Jones. And he's able to push the pile and break through it. Get out to the nine-yard line. The coaches talking about Marcus Vick, Rod, and they, they were kind of gushing and then trying to bite their tongue. And they don't want to say too much, but you know they have high expectations. And uh, they said the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Yeah, In yeah. this particular case, he's he, a talented man. Well, when your brother has really been synonymous with Virginia Tech, his, his number up there, name all over this place. Yep. I mean, I can only think of one other player who's associated with the university, and that's Doug Flutie in Boston College. Hand off. And again, it's Kevin Jones, and again, not much doing there. And you walk around campus or talk to local people, and they say, hey, you know, you look at the practice facilities here, look at the new off-ramp off the expressway. Michael Vick. A lot of, a lot of things in this area. Uh, you know, you don't want to call this the house that Michael Vick built. Maybe just one end zone oh. stands. Yeah, Michael Vick had, Mike Vick, I'm sorry. Yes, Mike, Mike Vick. Vick had an awful lot to do with this place. And I suspect Marcus Vick is going to be in the hunt for the quarterback spot next year. Now, the coaches don't want to say that, but you don't keep a good talent down. He's redshirting this year as his brother did. And Brian Randall, probably not thinking about that now. But Randall might go through some of the things Grant Knoll is going through. Knoll came into the season as the starting quarterback was hurt in the second game against LSU. They wanted Randall to play anyway in the third series. He came in, and Knoll, who's still slightly injured with a torn ACL, slightly torn ACL, there he is. Can't get his job back. Randall has been that good. Randall may wind up being in the same position as Grant Knoll is now, and, you know, Marcus Vick's got a little bit of that Harry Potter magic about him. Have you seen Harry Potter too? I will. Rod? I will. Do you read the book? Of course. I'm still, of course. Wait, I'm still waiting for Harry Potter to come out on DVD. I have read all the books. I saw the first movie, and I'll get to the second one, but I'm just not going to stand in line. It is a first down. Hey, special thanks go out today to the men and women of the security department assigned to the Naval Support Activity at Suda Bay on the Greek island of Crete. Thanks for watching this game on American Forces Network. All of America thanks you for what you're doing day in, day out. First down and 10. On the run, Randall throwing. Looked like through the hands, a bit high for Sean Witten. And maybe Reese will try and embarrass you again. Back to the studio. I owe him such an apology, Steve. I'll put it this way. Tomorrow night, we'll go for the Big East Golden Snitch. Pittsburgh and Miami, we'll get a look at that. We'll also talk about Rivalry Week. Hear from Bob and Mike on how it is to be on the sideline and in the week leading up to a big game like that. And among the one-loss teams, who's the best in the business? And, Rod, I think it's admirable. Not once have you called out Elway for calling timeout too soon. <laughs> Oh, oh Reese put it. Put it on the spot too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not playing golf with John anytime soon now. I can't wait for the next cut in. Here's Randall down the field. Big catch, big hit, and Sean Witten's able to hang on to the 35. He was thumped down by Brian King after the gain of 24. As Rich, as Reese would say, he must have had the golden snitch, and they wanted to knock it out of him. It's a nice throw and a big hit. I mean, Brian King just came in and unloaded. King, who continues to play with that broken thumb, put a little shoulder pad into him. And now flags fly as Randall is going to be taken down at the 31-yard line. Less than 90 seconds to play in the first half. Well, you know the deal with the golden snitch. I mean, once you get the golden snitch, right, game is over. I mean, that's it. You know, that's, that's the whole thing in Quidditch and Harry Potter. You get the golden snitch, game over. See, the difference is you and Reese have children and therefore have been <laughs> sort of forced into seeing the Off Harry sides, Potter. On the defense, five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat first down. And there's college basketball for you tonight. 
Xavier and Stanford will go at it. Hopefully the band will stay off the court. Yeah, oh, yeah, the there we go. Basketball just, game. Yeah, just pile on Stanford. The <laughs> Owens Courting preseason NIT. A battle ahead for New York City and Madison Square Garden. That's coming up after college football tonight on ESPN. What does Stanford look like without Curtis Borchardt, without Casey Jacobson, who should be playing at Stanford, but instead they both opted for the NBA? John Dunn is being attended to. We'll come back right after this. You know, we've spent so much time talking about Mike Vick. Only fair to mention West Virginia's most recent graduated quarterback. How about Mark Bulger? Woo. The season he's had. Oh, man, he's something. Two hottest quarterbacks in the NFL. Products of the two teams we're seeing here tonight. And a long throw by Randall down the sideline. And if there's no flag, that's excellent coverage. Ernest Wilford was the intended target. Let's go down to Alex. Steve, offensive tackle John Dunn has just been taken into the locker room. They are going to take some x-rays of his lower leg. All right, Alex, thank you. Well, that could uh, that could hurt Virginia Tech's rushing attack. Dunn has been a big factor up front for them. Jimmy Martin had replaced him over the last four games in the starting lineup. I see Martin has the best feet of any of the offensive linemen. But Dunn had started the first six games. Here's the throw by Randall. And that will go incomplete again. Ernest will for the intended target. Again, Brian King. Yeah, they're trying to pick on Brian King. He's made two fine plays in a row. I, I think, you know, if you're if you're a corner and you like to play the game, you look forward to matchups like the one he has with Wilford. You don't shy away from him. King hasn't shied away from that one tonight. King is tied for second in career passes broken up at West Virginia, trailing only Aaron Beasley. And he's been playing with a bad thumb as well, but that hasn't really stopped him. Randall, after his six for six start, he's missed on four of his last five tosses, got pressure, took a helmet in the mouth, but was able to complete that one to Richard Johnson. I guess James Davis is okay. Yeah. He is back, and I think <laughs> I think Brian Randall will tell you he's okay. You learned something about your quarterback, too, completing a pass like oh, look this. Look at this. You have to stand in there and take this thing right in the mouth. Bam. That's a head snapper. Is that a flag, too? Oh, no, 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 no. Not unless you got him with the helmet. It looks like he gave him, you know, straight up, eyes open, shoulder in. It looked like a shot to the head. Well, the head did snap back. Shanked by Vinny Burns, the punter. And it'll go out as soon as they mark it at the 33-yard line. The Louisiana native, Vinny Burns, just a 23-yard punt. Some more kicking woes for Virginia Tech and Frank Beamer. And that is truly uncharacteristic of his team. And he, he, can't, he can't understand it. I mean, they play their starters on their teams, They're usually very sound in the kicking game. Not the last couple of weeks. First down and 10 now. And maybe an illegal substitution or participation. Yeah, good, good call. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. You could see they couldn't get a player off the field. It was Derek Smith in the, running to the far sideline. And Coach Rodriguez with a word or two for him. Let's go back to the punt. You see some of the problems with the kicking game. Look at this thing. Just drops it off the side of his foot, and it goes directly to the side. And that snap was perfect. No pressure. Yep. yep. It was a bad drop. Dropped it bad, hit it off his foot line. Final half minute of this first half. On first down and 15. Tech down four. And here's Marshall. Oh, that ought to be a face mask. Out to the 30. Kevin Lewis brought him down. Did you see the way his head got ripped around? And it's a rarity, Rod. There's no flag on the play. Yeah. Uh, and if they didn't get the face mask, they had to get up around the shoulder pads, the collar, and spin him around because he just got jerked back. West Virginia will spend their last time out. What do you think of that, Rod? Using their last time, are they going to look for more points here with 19 seconds left deep down the field? No, why not? Okay. Why not? Or is Coach Rodriguez just using the timeout to give the referee a sentence or two? I, I think he's a little frustrated that, you know, they've kind of dominated this ball game, but they're only up 
by four points. And he, if he can steal a few more points here, he'd like to take a shot at it. Virginia Tech was 8-0, ranked number three in the country, and then went into uh-oh land. Lost here to Pittsburgh, giving up 21 unanswered, and then fell at Syracuse, where they always have troubles in triple overtime, and that has dropped them down to 3-2 in the conference. And West Virginia, they're, they're one yeah. of the great stories in college football. Yeah. You see, I circled that, the three at the top, because West Virginia is a surprise up there, but you got Pittsburgh and Miami tomorrow night. And, and that's another one you're going, whoa, oh, not just Big East, but national implications. You want to weigh in on the tomorrow night's game? You know, I, I think Miami is playing well. They played well for two years, and until somebody, you know, knocks them off, I, I don't know how you can say they're not the team. Second and 13, hand it off to Colborn. So that. So, Rod, I'll ask you, they take the time out to run that play. So was that, in fact, to buy Coach Rodriguez some time to maybe have a word with the official? I, I don't know. I don't know if he wanted to have a word with his quarterback or not, but you don't take the time out and simply come back and do what he did unless he was using it to make some kind of instruction to somebody. That's it. We are at halftime. Unranked West Virginia visiting 12th-ranked Virginia Tech. And the Mountaineers lead by four. We'll see you for the second half right now. Take a look at Reese. Steve Rodriguez's team going into Blacksburg not scared a bit. Four-point lead at the half. The resurgent Mountaineers on top of the Hokies at the break. Coming up at halftime, we will talk rivalry week. We'll see who these guys think of the best one-loss team. And, you know, you think rivalry week. I think you think the fans and the passion that they exhibit week in and week out. It will be exemplified by guys like this. Oh, go ahead and shake that groove thing. you got to fight for the Apple Cup. There's a lot of intense emotion coming your way. We'll find out what it's like to coach in games like this when we continue. We are set for third quarter action. 14 to 10. That's not a trophy, is it? West Virginia. It's not a trophy. It's a, it's not a, a, no. It's not the Black Diamond Trophy, which is really <laughs> what this rivalry is all about, getting all the way back to 1997. Bit of a surprise in this first half. West Virginia, unranked. They find themselves with a four-point lead. Hey, Bob Davey isn't surprised. He, he picked them uh, yes, he did. to win. Mike Godfrey said, no way. John Mollerup will put it in the air. And West Virginia will receive on the opening kickoff. And it's Derek Smith. And Smith will cut it out, out to the 27-yard line. And so they will open with pretty good field position. This is college football Wednesday night here on ESPN2. Along with Rod Gilmore, I'm Steve Levy. You know, interesting the way this will take shape in the top 25, right? You tell me, Virginia Tech, if they lose tonight, lose three in a row, could they drop out of the top 25? And West Virginia, if they win in Blacksburg, does that warrant them getting in the top 25? I think West Virginia could make a move. I don't think Virginia Tech would drop out. There are a number of other three-loss teams, and Virginia Tech sitting where they are right now, they'd have to fall a long way. They'd have to fall from a number 11, number 12, to fall out of the pole. I don't see that happening. Wow, there's three consecutive games, including two on your home field. Pretty good run to open up the half by Avon Colborn. All right, but it's three losses. If they lose tonight to three teams, pretty good. Right. Pitt, Syracuse, yeah. Yeah, okay, and, uh, and, and West Virginia. Right. But keep in mind... Two you, of them on your home field. I don't care. You're still number 12. You're not going to fall all the way out, particularly if you've got a three-loss Colorado, Penn State team, and LSU in the top 20. And then you get into the argument in terms of timing of losses. Hey, does a loss in the first game of the season mean you know, as much as a loss down the stretch? Hey, wait a minute. They haven't lost yet, okay? Well, no, I realize that, but in terms of the argument, you buy it matters what part of the season you lose? I don't think it matters until you fall, fall enough out. I don't think you fall from 12 out of the top 25. You may fall to 19, 20, 21, 22, okay. but not out of the top 25. Rashid Marshall's throw connects with Mike Page 
And we send it down to Alex Flanagan. Well, Steve, Coach Beaver gave a short, concise talk to his players at halftime. He told them first that the first five minutes coming into this half are critical. He told them set the tone for the second half. He said it's money time. Dig down. Dig into the nitty-gritty. He said there is no greater feeling than coming back and winning in the second half. And so far, it seems like I don't know if that talk has affected them as much as he is hoping. We'll see if the points at the end of the half, the field goal they benefit from the block punt. Will lead to any kind of momentum, although Avon Coburn is picking and choosing his holes across midfield, first down. Well, the thing that would help Frank Beamer is not so much the, the talking, but that his defensive guys make tackles. And they've missed a lot of tackles. I mean, in the first half, West Virginia had 100 yards passing. 87 of those yards came after the catch. Missed tackles. 15-yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. Can you tell who that personal foul was against? Well, I think that's the second one on Virginia Tech tonight on their defense. You don't get it together, you know, by taking the late hits and the shots. You don't do that. That's not how you get yourself on the right track. You get yourself on the right track by getting in great position, playing your responsibility, making sound tackles. And that'll get you going, not this other stuff. That last run by Coburn was the seventh block, seventh West Virginia running play of 10 yards or more tonight. Yeah, because of missed tackles. Out of the gun, two receivers up top to the right. Marshall may be changing the play. On first down and 10. And the pitch to Quincy Wilson. And Wilson is pulled down from behind, swung around by Willie Pyle. And Steve, West Virginia is just better than Virginia Tech at some things. Virginia Tech knows that when they see that formation, they know they get the boot or the option. They know that, which is why they came right now and took a shot at Marshall and forced the pitch. But they still weren't able to contain the pitch to the outside on Wilson. And that's just West Virginia being better than Virginia Tech in the run game right now. Second down and four. Straight handoff to Wilson. And he's making the first guy miss every time. Willie Pyle brought him down again. And I say making the first guy miss, you say poor tackling. Well, you know, good guys will make you miss. And, and that's what you get. Virginia Tech has a history, though, of fronting guys up, making good tackles. But when you have a guy like Wilson, he can make you miss, as Coburn can, too. There's one right there. And then he runs right through this tackle for another five yards. The tackle is made eventually, but he gets another five yards out of it. Wilson, seven carries for 74 yards, Rod. And he's their second best running back, averaging 10 and a half yards per rush. They fake it to him this time. Marshall tried to keep it himself. Vegas Robinson put a hit on him. Now, what Bud Foster believed was that getting Robinson back, that Vegas Robinson would be able to bring some physical presence to the point of attack. You know, and they've gotten a little bit of that from him, and he brings a little swagger back to this defense, but he can't do it all himself. He's got a lot of young guys around him, but they got to find a way to get more fundamental. Play your responsibility. Take the gap you're supposed to take. Foster has a relationship with Beamer that goes back to his playing days, 1979 at Murray State. They give it to Colburn, and he gives it to Travis Garvin. And Garvin able to turn the corner, taking some people on, and he's finally knocked out at the 10-yard line by Garnell Wilds. You see, now that's what I'm talking about because they didn't play the responsibility. When you look at this reverse, I believe it was Robinson who was on the outside and turned it back in. But instead of staying outside, watch, he's got him outside, got it outside, but he comes back underneath the block. When he comes back underneath the block, that opens it up outside. You have to trust your teammates to come make the play from inside out, and he needs to stay outside. Maybe that's some rustiness on his part, Rod. Missed the last three games with an ankle injury. He's still seventh on the team in tackles. This is third down and three now from the nine. And flags fly just as they snap the football. And Rashid Marshall involved with Brandon Manning there momentarily. Yeah, you, you know, Steve, you, you really don't want your guys to try and do too much, as we saw from Vegas Robinson on that last play. Fire to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. Tough spot to take one of those penalties. Yeah. And they're making a third down at eight now and pushing back to the 14. This has typically been the area where they go with 
Rashid Marshall getting outside or quick passes. They don't usually drop him back and let him fire it into the middle zone. Take the inside hand off to Coburn. Here's Marshall directing traffic. Throwing across his body. It's tipped and intercepted. Intercepted by Blake Warren. Off the tip ball. Billy Hardy got the tip. And Warren able to make the pick. And it's the first turnover of the game for them. And you see Rich Rodriguez talking to him because that's not what he wanted. He doesn't typically let him throw across the middle. He rolled him out to the right side. He wanted him looking outside and throwing outside. And he makes a mistake. Cardinal sent. Quarterbacks, don't throw back across the middle unless your name is Elway. You can't do it. You don't have the arm strength to get it there and throw it across your body. Blake Warren. His dad, Don, carved out a very fine NFL career with the Washington Redskins. And let's see what Virginia Tech can do with the turnover in the end zone. Off play action. Randall going to take a look. Throws underneath the coverage to Ernest Wilford to try to spin out of the tackle. And could not get any more. You know, Vic could make that throw. I said, oh, you're Vic right. Could, Vic could make it. Did too. you see the flick <laughs> that he had? He flicked his wrist, and it went 40, 55 I yards know. on a line. I know. That's just sad. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of guys in the NFL who wish Michael Vick were playing in his senior season at Virginia Tech. <laughs> Some of the veteran Saints, I mean, veteran guys of the Saints were saying, you know, we've never seen anything like him in the NFL. He's the best player I've played against. That's from 10 and 11-year veterans. Quite the compliment. Here's Randall. Trying to make some people miss and does just that. He ran into his own guy. He would have gotten further than the 34-yard line. Angel Estrada brought him down. 11 minutes to play here in the third quarter. Virginia Tech was sailing along at 8-0. All of a sudden, a couple of losses. And really, the feel-good story in college football might be West Virginia. Went 3-8 and last year. And with a win tonight, would just flip that totally around to eight and three right now it's been that kind of season in Morgantown West Virginia handoff it's Suggs he's across the 35 maybe to the 36 Ben Collins brought him down and there you see teams that want to talk about flipping it and turning it around. And there's West Virginia at the top. Yeah, well, the things that jump out at you, West Virginia, and then at the bottom, California, which was 1-10 last season. Jeff Tepper doing a nice job there. And then, all, obviously, Notre Dame, big turnaround there. Kentucky, a big turnaround for them, a program that had all sorts of problems. Guy Morris getting it done for the Wildcats with the big fella at quarterback. Rich Rodriguez talked about last year, even when things were bad, he said you could still see, even when things were bad, you could still see things were getting ready to turn around. And some good defense there. Jermaine Thaxton made the stop in the backfield on Suggs. It's a loss of four. Well, that's part of that 3-5-3 defense, and, and they really like that. Rodriguez discovered this defense when he was at Clemson playing, playing against South Carolina, saw what they were doing and said, hey, I kind of like that. I think maybe we'll bring that. Then he watched Mississippi State do it. The thing he likes about it is they give an eight-man in the box look with the 3-5-3, and they're able to bring people from different angles so that it screws up the blocking assignments for the offensive line. Talks about the middle linebacker really taking on some people so the outside guys can make tackles. And here is Randall cutting it back and finding plenty of room and then uses the sideline as his friend. He's out to the 50. It's a gain of 16 and on the sideline. The Virginia Tech sideline, they were thinking about a late hit. Yeah, Beamer wanted a late hit, but actually it was a good call because actually what West Virginia does here is they try to hold him up at the end. You get the flow going one way, Randall just makes a play. There's some missed tackles. Tim Love doesn't get it. Watch him get outside. Now watch Brian King. Holds him up there. He holds him up outside, and that's a good play. You don't want to penalize the guy for trying to protect somebody on the sideline. Randall. Eight rushes for 47 yards. And Virginia Tech will take a timeout. It's a bad feel for West Virginia. They've dominated this ball game, but now Virginia Tech moving the ball. They're in position. Nine and a half left here in the third quarter. Tech still trailing in the game by four. 39-year-old Rich Rodriguez. It's pretty young for a head coach. Well, it's nothing compared to when he got his first job at NAIA Salem. He was 24 years old 
the youngest coach in all of college football at age 24. Of course, it didn't work out that well. He was there for a year, and they dropped the football program after that. But that was not a reflection <laughs> on Rich Rodriguez, who's gone on the way terrific. Major Division I a college football coaching career. Eastlick out of the backfield, and we send it down to Alex. Hey, Steve, one of Rodriguez's philosophies is that it's essential that all of his teams, all of his players, know each other's names. Now, to do that, he gives them a test every year. He puts pictures up on a big screen, and then the players have to say the names. Now, Rod and Steve, he does not only do that for players, but they have to know everyone in the building, from coaches all the way down to people that are doing the janitorial work, Steve. That's great stuff, Alex. And it really makes it, Rod, you know, you walk by a guy, and he says, hey, Rod, how you doing? And you say, hey, buddy. It's not the same thing. Hey, buddy, you know something? This player. <laughs> Forgot my name run. already. It's, <laughs> it's Brian Randall, the quarterback keeping it himself. Lance no, Frazier but, made the stop. Uh, but that's important yeah. stuff. I mean, Rodriguez told us it was the way to establish a family, communication, that you know people, you talk to people, that you acknowledge them, and that's important in what they want to do in West Virginia. And it obviously has been an important factor to what they're doing because they're communicating on the field. There's no question about that. And communication so important in their particular defense, yelling out things and that kind of feelings for your teammates. Hand off, it sucks, taking it to the apartment, but there is a flag down. There is a flag down. Well, everybody says take it to the house. Rod. I was gonna say, apartment, condo, <laughs> summer rental. <laughs> And it's coming back, so I'll be able to use that again. I don't think so. <laughs> Not when I'm in the booth with you. Not when you're in the house. <laughs> Let's see what this penalty you know, is. Cabanas and everything else. Holding on the offense. Wow. Ten-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. The holding nullifies a 27-yard touchdown by Lee Suggs. Suggs, who earlier scored a touchdown in his 24th consecutive game. It's a new NCAA record, a record that had lasted 32 years. And remember, he had the torn up knee and missed most of last season and could have gone to the NFL last year, but he's back. He's got great speed again, good footwork, power, and I think he's uh, ready for the NFL. First and 15. Option. Suggs will try it. And able to turn the corner out at the 35, at the 25, rather. Lance Frazier bumped him out, gained a seven. Hey, back to Suggs and that injury. The coaching staff told us his family came in to watch on film what happened, the injury. And the family looked at it and said, hey, not much to it. Time to get back to work. The coaching staff was in tears. But that's what you have to know about Suggs and his family and the way they go about things. What did you say earlier? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree? Exactly. His family said, on we go. And he said, on we go. Rehab the knee, and here he is this year. Tore his ACL in that first game, missed the rest of the season, and has obviously come back in a big way. 11 carries, 56 yards, and one touch. Again, had the 26-yard touchdown nullified by the penalty. Here's Randall, plenty of time. Going to take it himself. And he is dropped down at the 21 by Tim Love. Tremendous week for the Big East. And even before we get to Saturday, you got this contest tonight. And look ahead tomorrow night, Pittsburgh and Miami at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet already nestled in at the Orange Bowl. Saw them at halftime. I wonder if Coach Coker is all right. You know, he had that, uh, he had that bad knee. He banged up his knee or something. And... Uh... I guess he'll be on the sidelines. Sure, they'll have the story Tape tomorrow him up night. or something. Huh? College football Thursday night. Taping up the coach. That's when you know you're tough. Randall, the keeper, flag down. And it's going to go against Virginia Tech. And Beamer will lose that head. Not, that's not a headset I want to be right about now. <laughs> that's in the process of getting slammed down on this turf. Yeah, but, you know, getting back to that Pitt-Miami game, mm -hmm. you know, Rod Rutherford, Quarterback pit, he's got to have a big game. I mean, he's got to play well. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the line of feet for the down. You know, you, you don't win a conference championship without your quarterback playing well. And these two guys have played well. Dorsey, you know, people don't give him a lot of do. You know, they say all he does is win. But you know something? He's thrown a lot more touchdown passes than anybody else in Miami. And Rutherford has really come of age this season. 294 yards rushing, 53% of his completions this season. Nice job, but 
those two guys will have to play well tomorrow night. The one that doesn't is the one that's going to lose. Dorsey uh, atop your, your list for the high I, I, I like Dorsey. I like Dorsey. I, I don't know that he is the top guy, but I like him in the hunt. I think he's earned that. So we're wavering just a bit, I see. Randall taken down from behind. The pressure from Angel Estrada coming on the blitz from his safety position. That's the first sack of the football game. Well, not only the first sack, but West Virginia rarely gets to the quarterback. They had 12 coming into the, the evening, but they use this 3-5 front. They free up a guy from the outside. Estrada comes all the way from the outside, makes the, makes the sack. Here's this uh, funky punting formation again. And Vinny Burns from the 50, no pressure, gets it away. Fair catch is called for at the 13 by Lance Frazier. Maybe we'll get more on Rod's Heisman hopefuls when we come back in a four-point game. We mentioned Rod's Heisman hopefuls, and here's a look-see. Oh, you saw Leftwich, best quarterback. Banks, most dominant player in the Big Ten as far as I'm concerned. Leading rusher, Chris Brown. Brock Forsey, dominant in the Big West, and the most exciting player, Seneca Wallace. Terrell Suggs, dominating, getting Arizona State back in the hunt this year. And there's the guy you'll see tomorrow night, Ken Dorsey, who does more than just win. He throws touchdown passes in clutch situations. First down and 10. West Virginia will take over. The ball at the 14-yard line, out of the eye. They give it to Coburn, the second man through, Avon Coburn. Out to the 19, and some more on Rod's. Wow, Rod, really limited. Most people give you, you know, top three, top four. What, you got three, six, eight? You know, this is a different year. Any guy could win this thing this year. And, and what I put together here yeah. is just a little different. You know, guys, because of this kind of year, how about a Brock Forsey out of Boise State? A guy who's a dominant player, not getting a lot of attention. Suggs out of Arizona State, you got to have a defensive guy in there. Well, Rod, you've assured yourself of not being wrong. You've picked eight candidates. I'll pick one. One of them is bound to win. I'll pick one if you pick one. I'll give you mine. Down the sideline, Marshall. And it was Colborne out of the backfield. The flag comes late. Brandon Manning had the coverage on Colborne out of the backfield. And another penalty against Virginia Tech. I, I think Frank Beamer is saying it all right now. It happened right in front of him, and Beamer can't believe it. Colborne had to wait for that ball. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. First down. Well, I'll let you be the judge of this one. Now, Coburn's going to lay out for this one, lay his arms out. I mean, what do you think, Steve? I think it's very close in that you case. You think it's very close. And you don't. Well, I mean, that ball was underthrown, and he had no chance to catch. He had to come back into the defensive guy to try and catch it. I realize it was underthrown, but at the end, it still went over his head. No, I thought it was to the inside. Inside and over, but I, he couldn't get there. Colborne do what he's better at running the football. That's a third critical penalty on Virginia Tech over the last four minutes. Nullified a touchdown, moved them out of field goal range, and now that penalty. Now, Colborne on that play, remember, as he was running for that ball, right? he slowed up. He absolutely he, slowed up. So he slowed up. He created the contact by slowing up. And the, and the defensive player is not looking or unable to see the ball. Well, you know, if, if you turn your head to try to make a play and the guy slows up on you, yeah, I mean, you, you got to have some common sense about that. And this is why I don't get into this discussion with you. <laughs> Avon Colborne off the pitch, and he's really pounded down at the 50. Garnell Wilds put a pretty good stick on him. Well, you know, missed tackles can really hurt you a lot. Look at the Virginia Tech defense. 81 yards rushing allowed on the season. Right, not tonight, 201. And it's not over yet. We've got five plus minutes in the third quarter, and you know West Virginia is gonna run the ball some more. Inside handoff, it's Quincy Wilson to the 45. And 13 of the 15 meetings during Frank Beamer's tenure between these two schools, the team with the most rushing yards in the game has won. 
Yeah, well, and so that has been significant. Well, they don't win when they don't stop the run and they don't run the ball. And remember, their last two losses, they gave up a total of 476 yards on the ground. That was to Pitt and to Syracuse. And tonight, they're getting just reamed by the West Virginia rushing attack. Wilson again. Dropped at the 41. And the clock continues to melt away under five to play here in the third quarter. And, and you have to understand this. This is not a scheme issue for Virginia Tech. It's not that they're not lining up in the right places. It's not that they don't know what plays are coming. I mean, they know the plan. I mean, we talked about it with them yesterday. They know the formations. They know the tendencies. They know what's coming. They're not getting off blocks. They're not tackling when they have the opportunity. Now, some good running backs have a little something to do with the missed tackle. Third down and two. Out of the eye, Wilson behind Fofana. And Wilson won't even run behind. He's full back, doesn't need him. Quincy Wilson explodes for the 42-yard touchdown. Making it look easy, untouched for 42. Quincy Wilson goes over 100 yards rushing. 10 carries, 124, capped off by the 42-yard touchdown run. And here's Todd James for the extra point and puts it through. And what is going on in Blacksburg tonight? 4.09 to play in the third. The 12th-ranked Hokies are on the verge of losing a third consecutive game. West Virginia, 86 yards, six plays, all on the ground. They lead 21-10. Plenty of fashionable football players who also just happen to be bachelors modeling football talent tonight here on ESPN2 <laughs> in Blacksburg, Virginia. And I'll tell you what, most of the talent on display, guys like Quincy Wilson and the rest of his West Virginia teammates. Modeling talent. Todd James, who happened to be bachelors one of these guys. Kicks it off from the 15. And one of the up players, Ben Collins, grabbed it and out to the 28-yard line. And Steve, it's all done up front. Watch what happens here to Sandage and Murphy, defensive linemen. It's all about getting off blocks, right? Jack, Zach Dillow, 56, and Jeff Burke. 68 manhandle look at the way they're being handled in here can't get off blocks no second level of the linebackers there to make plays when you can't get off blocks and your second level is out of there you get a 42 yard touchdown run untouched somewhat unheard of here's Randall trying to get the Hokies back into the game completes to Cedric Humes his first catch of the football game we touched on the triple threat for West Virginia, maybe everyone's aware of Colborne, but not the other two players tonight. Yeah, and they have really hurt them, especially Wilson, that last run. But Marshall's been effective on the end there when he's taken the ball to the outside. Colborne had a nice run for a touchdown, but they pretty much held him in check. But, boy, the home run out of Quincy Wilson, the man they call Q, really hurts Virginia Tech. Randall, option, will take it himself, finds a seat across midfield, and cuts it inside on Brian King, finally was able to force him out. Randall could have easily got out of bounds, but went for the extra five or six. Yeah, he had a little, little forearm there, shoving guys out of the way. 35-yard gain for Randall off the option. He says, hey, we've got some triple threat as well. Well, Virginia Tech needs to answer. And they've done nothing so far in the second half offensively. They're down by another score. They need to answer. The numbers on Randall, the sophomore from Williamsburg, Virginia. And throwing a bullet on the line to Ernest Wolford. Brian King was there to greet him immediately. Well, the way that Randall has been playing the last couple weeks, they want to throw more in first down. Simple down and out, Wilford, get him out there. That opens things up. Now they have a second and short. But when Randall gets that comfort where he can throw accurately as he has the last two weeks, well, you throw the ball on first down, loosen him up a little bit. How about second and two, Rad? 
Not bad. Want to take a shot here? Nah, I want to run it. And they do. Here's Kevin Jones. Was slowed up at the line of scrimmage. And that allowed the rest of the guys with white jerseys to come up and make the play, led by Jameel Adai. What a difference from a year ago. Last year, Virginia Tech won in Morgantown 35 to nothing. It was the worst shutout loss at home in 41 years for West Virginia. The most lopsided win by either in the series, dating back to 1912. West Virginia never got past the Hokie 23-yard line in the entire game. And here, in Blacksburg, they lead by 11. 2.48 left in the third quarter. On the option, good job by Randall to fake and keep it. And he bangs down inside the five. Again, after college football tonight, switch gears to college basketball. The Owens Corning preseason NIT will continue on ESPN. Xavier and David West will be taking on your Cardinal of Stanford. Check local listings for other regional action in your area. Yeah, that's uh, Josh Childress is now the sophomore scoring sensation for Stanford, and pressure is on him to to bring it for Stanford this season after losing Casey Jacobson prematurely to the NBA. Oh, paying attention to the college hoops here. A little bit, a little bit. Randall rushing so far, 13 times, 104 yards. This time he's pitching to Kevin Jones. And he is dropped. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Grant Wiley, haven't mentioned his name that much, and that's somewhat surprising for West Virginia to be winning and not saying Wiley's name all that often. Well, that's because more of the tackles have been made by Davis and Jamal Adai. I mean, the defense is designed to push things out to those three guys, or one of those three guys. And it just so happens tonight that Wiley has not been in a position to make a lot of tackles. Ben Collins and Adam Lenhort are sort of the unsung heroes. Just expect to fill a gap. This is a loss of three on the play and allow Wiley and Davis to make the big plays. Here's Randall throwing wide open. Touchdown, it's Keith Willis. His first touchdown of the season. Talk about making it look easy. Wide open. Had some field presence. He made three guys miss. Bought some time, used his feet and then had the presence of mind to still look go, down go, the go, field. Go. And not just down the field, but way to the left side and found Willis out there. That must have seemed like that ball hung up forever for Keith Willis. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And they're going for two here. And you know, this violates the rule we have. You don't go for two until you get to the fourth quarter. You got a lot of time. It's 90 seconds, 89 seconds left till the fourth quarter. You're not in the fourth quarter. You want it's to be a, a stickler. It's a, a that, bright huh? line rule. It's easy. All right. You know, you don't have to think about it. You just follow the rule. Let's see. Richard Johnson in motion. Two point conversion upcoming. Randall throwing. Intercepted. Grant Wiley makes a big play. Yeah, you see, it's why you don't do it. You take the one, you kick it, you're down by four, you get a touchdown in your head. Keeps it a five point game. Tech responds in a big way. Yep, they get a little momentum. Nice job here. Great footwork. You'll see Randall buy some time, get to the outside, and what presence of mind he has to find Willis back on the outside to get him back in the ball game. The moon over Blacksburg. Now, see, if you were a Harry Potter fan, that yes. full moon would have some significance to you, you know, but... But it doesn't. I don't know. I guess you're just an eight-mile kind of guy. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Okay. I'll probably see eight mile before That's right. Harry Potter. Eminem is your guy. I forgot about that. I don't that. know if he's my guy, Rod. Right now, that's the guy. The tight end who caught the touchdown. Keith Willis had two catches for 113 yards against Syracuse. That's the most receiving yards by a Virginia Tech tight end since Mike Shaw had 120 back in 1982 against VMI. Mile up the kick. Braxton on the return. Out to the 11-yard line. Hey, let's go back to that touchdown. I mean, there was not a white jersey anywhere near the 5-4-0 area code. That's here Willis Braxton. there. There's Willis blocking. You see him? Nobody's going to pick him up after that. And you're right. No one anywhere around him. The official is even 15 yards away. <laughs> that judge's the closest guy. Yeah. Five-point ball game. And of course, they failed on the two-point conversion ride. 
Hey, you know, and that's why you don't. I, you know, I understand, but I think you're being a stickler for 89 seconds. Here's Marshall keeping it, maybe getting a yard on the play. Coles Colas brought him down from his right end position. Okay, you went for two. Here's your problem. Now, West Virginia goes down the field, they get a field goal, you're down by eight points, right? You got a problem. If you kick your PAT, play your defense like you do here, kick your PAT, you're down by seven. Ron, I understand the mathematics of the point. My question is, you're telling me 90 seconds yep. later it takes place, then it's okay to go yes. for two. You seem desperate right now in the third quarter. Play the game. Kick for the 90 seconds. Line up, play defense, get the ball back, score. Quick pass off the play action of Derek Smith. And it's going to bring up a third down situation. That's coming up on the final half minute of the third quarter. Brandon Manning the stop. That's why it's a bright line rule. You don't have to think about it. You just do it. Follow the rule. Take the guesswork out of it. Exactly. There's no gray area, Rod. End of third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Smith so far, he's had a big game. Four catches, 92 yards. A couple of key plays on third down. One that went for a score. Here's third and three. Final play likely of the third quarter. Pass is completed. And good running. Colburn made the first guy miss, not the second. A flag is down. They're going to get Virginia Tech for being offside. Another Virginia Tech penalty. Offside. Penalty such a reflection of the coaching staff. Offsides on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. That's the end of the third quarter. That will do it. End of the third quarter. And you say that a reflection of the coaching staff is a very, very young team. For West Virginia, Avon Colborn has his touchdown. Quincy. Quincy Wilson exploded. Rasheed Marshall's got his touchdown as well. 21-16 after three. Steve Levy, Rod Gilmore, Alex Flanagan. Lane Stadium, Blacksburg, Virginia. It's college football Wednesday night. Frank Beamer said he loves the idea of playing on a Wednesday night. Almost guarantees you the week off before and the week off afterwards, as opposed to a Thursday night when you likely have to play before. Well, they needed the time to get healthy. And they're trying to get healthy here in the fourth quarter, starting with Avon Colborne. And again, good effort by the little guy, Coborn at 5'9", 190 the second effort. Now let's go down to the field and Alex. Well, Steve, you guys may notice that the Virginia Tech players do not have names on their jerseys. Every now and again, they decide to wear the old throwback jerseys. I guess they wore it two years ago against Virginia. And Stephen Rod, it's the same jersey that Frank Beamer wore when he played here. Thanks, Alex. Of course, Rich Rodriguez played at West Virginia. Kind of a rarity these days. Alums coaching their alma mater. Colburn stopped by Garnell Wilds. And Frank Beamer, prior to the Marshall game here earlier this season, had his jersey retired, former standout defensive back for three seasons. Well, he, he's been here a long time. Three, uh, three starting seasons, four years as a player, 16 as a coach. Third down and one. The West Virginia wanted to hang on to that football and keep that clock moving. Up by five. Handoff. Wilson. Did he get there? His teammates are signaling he's got the first down. Uh, it's going to be close. Let's see if they're going to call for a measurement here. Willie oh. Pyle stepped into that pile <laughs> and shut it down. And they are going to. They are going to measure. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't think he got the greatest spot in the world. We'll see. And talk about this. Coaches coaching at their alma mater. And there are, we should point out, there are 16 of them across the country. But interesting, all located in the West Virginia, Virginia area. Yeah. Four of them. What's that mean? It means this is a great place to, to come back and coach. Rodriguez grew up. About a half hour outside of Morgantown. So you can go home again. You can go home again. Okay. That was the line I was looking for. It wasn't available to me. Yeah, that's why I'm here, buddy. Rodriguez go up in Grant Town. Half hour away from campus from Morgantown. So they do get the first down, Rod. A favorable spot. On first down and ten. 
Quick screen out to the left to Coburn. Heather Wilson, I beg your pardon. And it's just a gain of two on the play. Well, every now and then you see flashes of the Virginia Tech defense as it used to be. I mean, they, they know what the plays are. And no, no surprise, when I mean, they're well prepared, they're in position, it's when they miss tackles or they try and do too much and get out of position that they have problems. Tech has allowed 384 yards to this point tonight. And this formation tends to be their, their sprint out boot kind of, a, uh, of an alignment that Virginia Tech would expect. And there comes the boot. Fake the inside handoff, and you weren't falling for a rod, and neither was this Virginia Tech defense led by Jim Davis making the stop. So, I mean, it's not a case of Bud Foster not calling the right defense and not getting his guys in position. Here, they know. They smell it. They play in there. They hang there for it. They get off blocks, and they make plays. Jim Davis, that time, getting in there. Foster told us, hey, we're such a young team, you know, we're making adjustments, but those adjustments don't translate down to the field. Was I supposed to go inside? <laughs> oh, sorry about <laughs> That's that. That's what the coach said, inside. Which part of that didn't you understand? But, you know, dealing with 18, 19-year-old kids, for the most part, on this very, very young Virginia Tech oh. team. West Virginia. And the Mountaineers will take a timeout. They both have two timeouts left for this, the remainder of this fourth quarter in a five-point game. And there's a good look at the Black Diamond Trophy. A real close-up shot. Wait, wait a second. Rod, that's not the Black Diamond Trophy. <laughs> Don't look at me. Here's third down and nine. Out of the shotgun, Marshall, quick toss out to the left side, and it's Wilson going to cut it back instead of north and south, east and west, and takes on some people and loses the football, but he fumbles out of bounds at the 40. He was pounded by Vegas Robinson, and it'll go just as a two-yard gain. The bar has risen here in Blacksburg and Frank Beamer. They got to 8-0, and, and then all of a sudden it's gloom and doom. They lost two in a row, dropped to 12. And Beamer had told us before the season, he said eight wins would be a great season for this young team. It's a very difficult schedule. Yeah, well, they got it going early on, and then they hit that stretch where they thought they could continue to pick it up, but it fell apart the last three weeks, and we're seeing part of the problem tonight with the missed tackles and sometimes poor play in special teams. The punt away to the 22 Richard Johnson up the sideline and he sent flying and there's a late hit flag he was bumped out at the 48 and then maybe bumped again after that Adam Jones a true freshman might have been a bit too aggressive now let's make no mistake about this West Virginia has dominated this game 261 yards rushing against Virginia Tech and they're in a position where they could lose this game. After the player was bounds, personal foul on the kicking team, 15-yard penalty, first down. And you're just not going to get any break on this when you're near the sideline. You have to protect the players. And this is late. Flying in, very, very late, Ben Collins, who is a linebacker who likes to fly around, and Adam Jones, both of them over there, you can't take shots on the sidelines. It's too dangerous. From Jones, you might be able to accept it a little bit more. Yeah. A true freshman, Collins is one of the leaders there, senior, who well, makes I, that mistake. I thought Collins was more culpable. He went flying in there, you know, taking the shot when he clearly didn't have to. First down and 10. Let's see how badly the penalty hurts. Off play action. Randall steps up and throws and nearly caught and nearly intercepted. Keith Willis was the intended target. Let's see if he's shaken up. He went down in a big way, and he is. Yeah, he, he ran into James Davis. Davis thought he had a chance to pick it off, and they met simultaneously with the ball. And just keep your eye on Willis over the middle when we take a look at it, but he is down. Now watch the middle of the field. Watch the middle. Willis shows up there. Here comes Davis. Mm. Same time. Head goes back. Yep. Davis is reading Randall's eyes. Sees it, comes right up. And he he didn't even think in terms of making the hit. He was trying to pick off the ball. Here's what it sounded like. Mm. 
Got a good feel for it there. Yeah. What a contrast, Rod. Remember, Willis in the third quarter was so wide open, nobody around him for the touchdown catch, and they're playing heavy traffic. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a, that's a great play by Davis. And again, he was not looking to hit Willis. He was looking to pick off the ball. It just so happens that Willis met him when the ball got there. The coaching staff told us about Willis, and we haven't gotten him the ball enough. He's real athletic, as Davis looks on concerned. But Willis is a guy they know they can go to. You may recall Davis got a lot of attention for blocking a couple of kicks last week. He's a guy with almost a 39-inch vertical leap. We'll be right back. Here's hoping Keith Willis is just shaken up. And we'll be able to shake that off. Had the big game against Syracuse, which featured an 87-yard catch, the longest ever, ever, by a Virginia Tech tight end. Second down and 10 from the 38. Randall overthrew Richard Johnson, his intended target. Well, it gives them a big third down here now. This is key. They've got a, a short field if they can pick up a first down here. They have Wilford to the outside. They haven't gotten the ball to him an awful lot. Yet you have to believe that Frank Beamer wants to get the ball to Wilford here. And they put him into the short side of the field where they're hoping to get single coverage. Third and ten. Gives it to the first man through, Doug Eastlick. Well, you know something? I think what Frank Beamer decided was that he was in two-down territory and that he was going to run it on third down and then see where he was for his fourth down play. And that's exactly what he's doing. Now he's going for it, and he's got a choice here. He, he figures he's closer now where he could run it or he could throw. More than likely, he'll give Randall an option to get him outside so he could run if he needs to or he could throw a quick, quick pass to pick up the first down. Ten times prior to this, have the Hokies gone on fourth down? They've been successful six times, but they want to make sure they get this right, and Virginia Tech will take a timeout. So with 11 minutes to play, the Hokies have one timeout left here in the fourth quarter. Well, the Pittsburgh Panthers ended the perfect season of these Hokies of Virginia Tech, and can they do it to Ken Dorsey in Miami? Tomorrow night, 7.30, college football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City only on ESPN. And, of course, it all start, starts with quarterbacks. Well, we talked about them earlier and how they both need to play well. That'll be the difference. Rod Rutherford can certainly get it done. He's been hot lately with Fitzgerald being a big key receiver for him. And you know what Ken Dorsey has done. I mean, he's had so many fourth-quarter comeback drives in his career, it's not surprising if he comes up with another one. But that's what they're going to need. You're going to need great play out of your quarterback tomorrow night in that big game. And whichever team doesn't get it, I think, is a team that's going to lose. I let you kind of waver on the whole Heisman thing. Let me ask you right now. Neutral field, Miami, Ohio State. Oh, I, Miami. Not even close. Not, not even close in my mind. I, I, don't, I don't think it's close. I, I happen to agree with, uh, with Coach Godfrey that the Big Ten is not very strong this year. And Miami was strong last year. I think Miami is strong this year. I, I'd like Miami in a big way. You know, that brings up an interesting point. Right now, you take the Big East over the Big Ten? This season? This yes, season. I would. I would this year. Right? You never hear that football comparison. I, I think the Big East is stronger than the Big Ten this year. Big fourth down there. And after the timeout, let's see what they talked about. Three receivers to the right. Randall straight drop and throws. And not even close. Well, he had three of them out there, and he threw the ball right between all three of them. You know, and I'm a little bit surprised. I, I thought they would come with something where they got Randall outside, where he had a chance to use his, his running skills or his arm. But that was a drop back, and I'm not sure that Frank Beamer is crazy with that. He, he looks like he's a little surprised and not real happy with that call. They turn it over on downs. Before that series, Randall had been five for five here in the second half. And in that series, he went 0 for his last three. But he is such a running threat. You right. don't really want to take that away from and him. And that was a straight drop pass, drop back pass right there on that particular play. Avon Coburn, the ball carried. 
He'll pick up about five. Jonathan Lewis, another one of those true freshmen on this Virginia Tech defense, made the stop. Well, and he made the stop that time. You know, Alex made a point earlier in the show about Virginia Tech and their two running backs, Jones and Suggs, and keeping a guy fresh. Well, West Virginia has the same thing. I mean, Coburn has done a lot, but they've got Wilson, who's done a lot. 264 yards rushing already for West Virginia. Only Air Force has better rushing yards per game than the Mountaineers do, and that's certainly saying something. The second best rushing team in the nation. Again, you go back to last season compared to this season for West Virginia, they're averaging 11 more points and 106 more yards rushing per game than last season. 11 more points. That's something. It's all the difference. And now Third down to three. Yeah, this is, uh, this is their power formation. They've got their fullback in. They tend to go toss. They tend to go isolation with this formation. Off play action. Marshall rolling to his left in trouble. Throws it up for grabs. And he's fortunate. No one on the Virginia Tech side. Well, the sideline, but able to make an interception there. Yeah, and they broke their tendency. They went with something they normally don't do. Tried the element of surprise. It didn't work. They didn't execute the element of surprise. They went away from their tendency, and they tried something new, and it didn't work. Considering the way Virginia Tech went out on that fourth down, they're a pretty good. Going to get pretty good field position there. Could have been a lot worse. Hardly any time taken off the clock as Todd James boots it away. Line drive kick hits at the 30. And it'll be down at the 27-yard line. Adam Jones was there. It's a 33-yard punt. Well, it's starting to get kind of dicey for Virginia Tech. I mean, they need to be consistent about something. Yeah, I think they got to get Randall a little bit more involved. Get him out on the perimeter a little bit more. They got to get Wilford involved. He hasn't caught anything in a while. They got to get those two guys going in order to get it, get it happening for their offense. So Virginia Tech will take over. Again, have just one timeout left. 9.38 to play here in the fourth. They find themselves on the verge of losing a potential third consecutive game, two of which would be at home. And that pass, a little too hot for Terrell Parham from Brian Randall. Well, let's go down to the field, and here's Alex. Steve, Keith Willis is out for the rest of the game with a head injury as the trainer was checking him. He had blood in his mouth from taking such a hard hit. Stephen Rod, Virginia Tech can ill afford to lose another player. Well, Alex is right about that, and that's going to put even more emphasis on using Wilford to the outside and also trying to get Randall outside of the pocket a little bit, and you wonder about the running game without Willis in there to block. That might hurt them some. Out of the eye. Randall straight drop. Good pass protection. Now on the run. Trying to cut it back. He's got a pretty good setup here for the turn of the corner, but he can. Oh, oh, oh. He's dropped to the 32. Brian King, who's been one of the better Mountaineer defenders tonight, came up to make the play. If Brian King does not make that tackle, he's off to the races. Randall is off to the races. I mean, watch the way he buys time here. This is a little bit like the old Michael Vick. You know, run around, get a little, get a little thing going there, come on back. Now watch Brian King. Right there. Without that tackle, that's six points. Wound up running some 30 yards when you look all at it to gain just five. And again, Brian King had a strong game, able to make that stop. Third down and five. Virginia Tech in desperate need of a drive and a big play. Across the middle, caught, incomplete. Lee Suggs hangs on. First down yardage. Ben Collins brought him down. This is simply a circle route by Suggs out of the backfield. And Randall squeezes it in in front of the defender. And Huss Suggs, not known for catching a lot of balls, has made a couple of nice catches tonight. Suggs actually has a couple of touchdown catches for the season, which puts him in select Virginia Tech company. Dumped it down to Suggs. And he should have first down yardage at the 43. Suggs has two touchdown catches, catches this season. It's the first time since Vaughn Hebron in 1990 that a Virginia Tech tailback has caught at least two touchdowns in a season. Well, Kevin Jones is back on the field now, replacing Suggs, and, and Jones has not been, been right tonight. I mean, I, I don't think he's been as effective as they hoped he would be tonight. 
And I think that that hamstring, that injury, hasn't allowed him to be himself. But he's in there now in a key situation, and they're going to need something out of him. He was so important last year when Suggs went down for the season. Hand off. Here's a run by Jones. And it looked like he slipped on his cut. He might be giving the official a hard time there, Rod. But the official had gotten in his way. An official Gain of eight. Is, he's part of the field. He's part of the field. So can't get too upset with him. I think he's annoyed at the official. Yeah, but you know, he's part of the field. He's trying to cut to get around him, but he is part of the field. That's just part of the deal. The official got a piece of him there, right? <laughs> he might have gotten a piece of the ankle yeah, there. Good stop by him, huh? But, you know, that's just part of the deal. I mean, the guy is right. there. You can't get upset with the official if he's in your way. Tell him to move beforehand. You can't do it in the middle of the play. First down and 10. Four to snap it. And they just get it off. Randall takes the hit as he throws middle of the field. Had a man. It was Wilford who had a step. And Randall will pick himself up off the turf. Got hit pretty good by Angel Estrada, who belted him earlier. Estrada came on the blitz. He needed one more step. He needed one more half second because he had his man Wilford out there, but he threw it too soon. He just couldn't wait a little bit longer because Estrada put the pressure on him. And, and that's how pass rush complements pass defense. Second down and 10. Line up in the eye. Really had him jumping offside. Randall on the option, pitch to Jones. Turns the corner and finds himself all alone. He stepped out of bounds as he walks into the end zone. Stepped out of the 21. It's a gain of 15. Looked like Jamil Adai was able to push him out. But I think Jones was surprised he found himself all alone on the sideline. Yeah, I think you're right. And I, I don't think Jones is 100%. I mean, we've seen him the last year and a half, and we've seen him make these runs, keep his balance. We've seen a burst from him. We haven't seen that burst out of Jones tonight. So I don't think he's 100%. Last season, as a true freshman, he was the Big East Rookie of the Year. Had his big game this season against Marshall, 171 yards, rushing on 24 carries with three touchdowns. With Suggs in the game. West Virginia. West Virginia will take a timeout. Each team has one left for the final 651 of regulation time. It is the stone that they touch out of the Virginia Tech locker room heading onto the field. You need a little bit of that excellence right now as they're trying to get back on top in this ballgame. 21-16, West Virginia. Virginia Tech with a first down on the 21-yard line. And it is, a, once again, the eye formation. And Wilford out to the left with single coverage. It's Doug Eastlick, the fullback inside. This is the point in the game where you start wondering and thinking about, OK, do you have a special play? Do you have a play that you get you save for this situation, Steve, that would make a difference? A play where you've got them inside the red zone that you know is a, a gotcha or a matchup that you want that'll work for you. Second down and five upcoming. Pivotal point of the game. Pivotal part of the football field. Hand off to Suggs. He is inside the 10. It's a gain of seven. That is nice. That is it's been a quiet half for Suggs, but they haven't had the opportunities. Well, he and Jones have not been quiet on this drive. You're right, they didn't have the opportunities before, but this drive, they both have made runs. That run right there was really nice. Nice use of his feet, shifting, dancing in and out of holes, not giving anybody a big shot at him, picking up the first down. First and goal, just inside the 10. Send the man in motion, Parham. And they're handing it off, up the middle, and down a one-yard line goes Lee Suggs. 5.45 to play in the fourth quarter in a five-point game. 12th-ranked Virginia Tech on their home field. Looking to still be a major player in the national rankings after starting the season 8-0. West Virginia, maybe the feel-good story of the college football season, not feeling so good right about now. Second and goal. 
from the one. Suggs trying to bang through. Did he get there? Waiting for the signal. And I think they're going to say he's short. Well, his Inside the one-yard line. His second effort almost got him in there. I mean, he was hit initially, but he's so powerful that Adam Lenore couldn't get him on the first try, the first try, but held on and took him down just before he got in there. Suggs has 71 yards rushing. He needed 61 to pass Eddie Hunter, sixth all-time on the Virginia Tech rushing list. But he'll worry about that after the game. Here's third and goal inside the one. Everybody packed in tight. And the quarterback trying to keep it, Randall. He didn't get there. And didn't get there. He did not get there. And I would say if it's four down territory or at the 30 or 35, you could say the same thing here, Rod. Uh, but Lee Corsell's going crazy because Lee Corsell tells you down here, use your fullback. And they've got a big one in Easley, a good one. He's had great blocks all night. Instead of letting your quarterback sneak it in there, give it to Suggs. Put your fullback in there and let him go. And I think Lee's right about that thing when you get in the red zone down here and you've got that kind of a backfield. Hey, let's give credit to Kelvin DuBose who made the big stop of the nose tackle on Randall. This might be the ball game and the balance right here. Fourth and goal inside the one. Handoff. Subs didn't get there. Denied. Grant Wiley coming down at the line of scrimmage. Wow. They crashed from the outside, and they got good penetration up front. Three cracks at it from inside the one, and this West Virginia defense stands tall and proud. Yeah, this 3-5-3. Watch him come hard off the corner, and what about the effort of Grant Wiley? He just leaps over the top. They're crashing the outside, but look at him. He just leaps over the top, makes the play. I mean, that is a big-time play. It was a pretty quiet first half for Wiley. We pointed that out. He got the interception on the two-point conversion and maybe the biggest defensive play of the season right there for West Virginia. Let's see how the rest of it shakes out now. Mountaineers will take over on offense. And West Virginia will spend their final timeout. But how huge was that play and how incredible was that terrific I mean, college goal line oh, stand oh, right there phenomenal rich rodriguez got a smile on his face for the time being don't miss the finish of this one there's grant wiley last year against these hokies he had a huge game with 14 tackles had an interception and broke up a pass a three-year starter, the junior, making a huge play there, Rod. You talk about laying out. I mean, you talk about the extra effort. You just don't find guys on the goal line who can jump over the offensive lineman and then make a tackle on a guy like Suggs, who's a great back. I mean, that's, that's tremendous. Getting loud in that end zone, making it hard for Rasheed Marshall and his teammates to get the playoff, and let's see. Hand off up the middle, trying to get any kind of running room. Avon Coburn squeezes through maybe a yard on the play, and the clock will tick away. Well, if you're Virginia Tech, you want to make something happen. If you can get a safety, get within three points, get the ball back, then you're only within a field goal. You don't have to get a touchdown. You're down by five. Looks like there is an injured player down. Might be Ken Sandor, the right guard for West Virginia while he's attended to. Rod, take us down on the field. What's it like, a goal line stand in terms of emotion? You've been on both sides of that. Well, absolutely, you're talking about defensively getting penetration. If you make a third down play, as they did at West Virginia, you get a little bit stoked up, and you tell, tell each other, hey, one play, we can do this. Lyman, make a new line of scrimmage. Dig deep, get them back another yard, and we'll make the play, linebackers and secondary. Uh, how you want as Sandor is attended to, will step out in this five-point game. We are back in Blacksburg with 3.38 to play here in the fourth. Ken Sandor is still being attended to. The senior from New Jersey. And there is Grant Wiley. He's made a couple of big plays in the second half. Well, big-time players make big plays in big games, and... 
at the right time. Fourth quarter, Grant Wiley picks off the two-point conversion. And then he comes back on this fourth and go. Goal line stand, leaps over the offensive line, and takes down one of the best running backs in the country. There you see Wiley leading the team in tackles. A huge season after an injury-plagued season last year. In his rookie season, he was the Big East Rookie of the Year back in 2000. We'd like to thank the men and women who formed the United States Air Forces in Europe watching this telecast on the American Forces Network, including Army and Air Force Exchange Service employees who provide great customer service to our military members and their families at Aviano Air Base, Italy. Thanks for all you do and for doing it with a smile on your face. I think Grant Wiley wants to smile, but you can't. Right in this spot, right? You got, you got to realize, hey, there are 3.38 left in the game. I'll smile a lot on the bus ride home. He's already thinking about the next thing they have to do. You know, when, when you make a great play like that, there's only so much celebrating you can do before you realize, you know, game's not over. I might have to get back out there. He understands West Virginia is still in a hole. The ball inside their five-yard line. They got to get it out of there. He knows they're going to have to get out there on defense in West Virginia and try and make another stop. Sandor will be helped off the field. He'll be replaced by Jeff Lewis, the junior from Fairview, Pennsylvania. West Virginia has rolled up 269 rushing yards in the game to this point. And they need to ground out a couple of first downs. And wait a minute. 269. Yeah. That is just not what you expect to hear. I glossed over that, you mean? You know, yeah. I mean, Virginia Tech's playing defense. Rod, West Virginia is the second best rushing team in the country. So Still, this is Virginia Tech. They have a history of shutting down teams that can run. Not tonight. And history, not the present. Yep. Here's second down and nine. And they're making some noise here at Lane Stadium. Second and nine from barely the two. 13 left on the play clock to get off the snap. It's not a bad idea to look it down to three or four with the clock running. They get it ahead to Avon Coburn, and they bring up a third down and long. The clock continues to tick away. Virginia Tech has one timeout left. I'm fairly certain that on that goal line play, Bud Foster gathered his troops and said, we're going for the fourth down because we have confidence in you guys. If we don't get it, you get out there and you stuff West Virginia. And he got his troops fired up. And when they didn't get it, he sent them out there on the field. They've been playing inspired on this series. West Virginia playing without Mikel Henderson, one of their outstanding wide receivers. And other guys are picking up the slack around him. On third and nine, push it into the pile. It's Colbert again. And Frank Beamer wants to use that timeout and conserve as much time as possible. That's his last one, I believe. That is. It? He has taken it. And they'll be forced to punt it away. And then you talk about a safety here, Rod, taking the safety? Well, I don't know about that. There's so much time on the clock. You give him a safety here, you're going to give him good field position. You're going to be in trouble. Okay. You got to kick the ball away. Coming up. As soon as we are through, the Owens Corning preseason NIT, Xavier and Stanford. And part of the interruption with Kornheiser and Wilbon, that terrific show, will air at 2 a.m. Eastern, 11 Pacific, here on ESPN2. Remember earlier in the game, little Beamer ball, blocking punts and kicks and things like that. Ernest Wilford, the wide receiver, coming right up the middle untouched for the block on Mark Fazolari. Yeah, and Jimmy Williams getting in there almost with a chance to pick it up. They will have Williams, and they will have Wilford. Here you see Williams, 19. Great athlete, second-best athlete on the Virginia Tech team. About 6'3 half, 6'4, can leap and is quick. He and Wilford will be the tag team guys coming after this one. And if you're West Virginia, all you want to do is get the ball out of there. Fourth down and eight. Fazolari has his feet on the end of the end zone goal line. And he's going to take the safety. He'll step out and take the safety. Wow. Now, of course, I understand what you were saying, Rod. Makes it a three-point game. You're going to get good field position. Of course, 
that the way Virginia Tech blocks kicks, punts specifically, you're talking about giving up a touchdown. Yes, but you know, they weren't coming that time either. They were in a punt safe, punt return safe. They didn't come after him. They were going to get try and get the return out of it. Now, it doesn't take a touchdown to get you into overtime. Doesn't take touchdown. I mean, touchdown will beat you, obviously, but before, a field goal would not have hurt them if they kicked it away. And, of course, you think about Virginia Tech and field goals and the kicking woes of Carter Worley. As you look at him, and that's exactly what he's thinking about. Had a couple of chances to win at Syracuse in overtime. Missed a couple of field goals. We showed it to you earlier. And Virginia Tech has not lost three games in a row in a long time, 1997. And you have to go back even earlier. The last time they lost three straight in the regular season, that was 1992. That is also the last time West Virginia won here in Blacksburg. They beat the Hokies 16 to seven. Okay. Two and a half to play, no timeouts. Exactly, no Either timeouts, team. no timeouts. And they burned a timeout on that fourth down when they could have saved it. Now they're gonna get good field position. They have a young quarterback, they'll have Two and a half minutes, they're about to try and get in position for a field goal. This is getting good. You like it, huh? It's pretty interesting. Look at that. Wednesday this night Wednesday football. night football. Yeah. Might have something here. Todd James will kick it away. Ball on the tee at the 20. And Lee Suggs is back deep. It's a short kick that will go out of bounds. And that's the reason for the flag. And that will give very good field position to Virginia Tech. Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 50-yard line. First down. Now, want to keep it away from Suggs, I understand, but not that far they, away. They didn't want that. They didn't want that. They wanted a chance to make a tackle. They wanted to play. First now, and 10 at the 50. If you are... Virginia Tech, you realize to secure a good field goal attempt, you probably need 25 yards. That would give you an attempt out of 42 yards. But World as long as 43 this year. So you'd probably like to have five more yards. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get a little bit closer. Don't stretch him. Of course, clock does stop with the first down. Let's see. First and 10 from the 50. Here comes the blitz on the run. And Randall's going to be caught down from behind by James Davis. The well, clock will tick away. West Virginia is in their nickel package, but they play it the same way. They see run, they blitz. They bring everybody, essentially, except their deep secondary guys. They see pass, they drop off. Does Grant Wiley have another big play left in him? Might have to make one to secure this game. The difference on the board is three. Here's Randall. Plenty of protection. Throws across the middle, incomplete, and he's shy of the first down marker, Sean Whitten. And the clock will continue to tick. Yeah. It's an eight-yard gain. Well, and they got to get to the line of scrimmage and run a third down play, a short yardage play. They have no timeouts. Neither team can stop the clock. Third and one. And the quarterback, Randall, will keep it and have the first down, and that will stop the clock for the time being. It'll stop the clock. Once they are lined up and ready to go, the clock will start once again. Great drama tonight between these two traditional rivals in a series that started in 1912. This is the 48th meeting. West Virginia actually leads 26 wins, 20 losses, and one tie. Virginia Tech has earned in the last 13 years. Batted up at the line of scrimmage. Jason Davis got a hand on it. And I'll tell you what, Randall and the Hokies were lucky it wasn't intercepted. Yeah, and West Virginia is doing a very smart thing. They are playing a zone blitz or a fire zone defense right now where sometimes they are dropping one of their defensive linemen into the short zone. When not the defensive linemen, they bring up that. See that late hit there? That almost flagged him. That could have been a bad, bad deal for Virginia Tech. Jake Grove, their stud in the middle of that offensive line, nearly made a horrendous mistake. Or did, but didn't get caught. Randall throwing and completing. Leading some sure tackling there. Ernest Wilford. And they didn't stop the clock. The official kept winding the clock, yep. even though Wilford went out of bounds. Said he was down inbounds, so the clock continues to tick. Well, he wasn't down. I guess he had to rule his progress had been stopped inbounds. 
and he also lost his shoes, so one of their best players is not on the field. And now the clock is stopped. But something was thrown on the field. Or was that the sneaker? Third and one. Yeah. Now they wind the clock. Well, they need another 11 yards for a good attempt at a field goal. You got to get down to around the 20. Here's Randall throwing, completing first down. That'll stop the clock. Able to hit Chris Shreve. How's that? a time to get your first catch of the game. Well, he's only in there because Wilford lost his shoe and Shreve ran on the field to replace him. Now they stop it. 33 seconds left. Wilford is back in the game. And there a look at Carter Worley. He's already connected tonight. He's one for one tonight. 30 four-yard field goal he was able to hit as a team including that one this season Virginia Tech is just nine of 19 field goals this season they've used three different field goal kickers so you wonder where his confidence is second and ten Randall's gonna take off thought about going out of bounds and only goes out of bounds after he has the first down certainly in field goal range and not only that they've got a first down 25 seconds, no timeout. They have time for a shot or two at the end zone. Well, the way the kicking problems have gone all season, absolutely. Why not go for the touchdown? Well, if you take a shot in the end zone with a young quarterback, I think you got to look to the outside. You got to look at Wilford. You got to look at fade routes. You got to look at corner routes, but not anything over the middle where it could be picked off again. First down and 10. Randall rolling to his right. Nearly sacked and the pass is incomplete was looking for Richard Johnson who laid out and Randall just missed him yeah. 21 seconds left and Jamal Adai was in coverage there and was in pretty good position he has a chance almost to make a play on the ball he got his left hand on it pretty good play by Adai wow the replay that looked like an excellent defensive play from here it would be a 28 yard field goal attempt and it's also at the, the left hatch you'd like to be dead center if you could be but they'd have to run the ball inside to make that happen. Second and ten. Randall going to give it a look, survey the situation. Running to his left, now throws. End zone intercepted! A critical mistake by Brian King! King comes up with a pick. Randall throws the interception. Well, what are and they're going about? wild on the West Virginia sideline. Rich Rodriguez is trying to get his guys composed, and flags fly. Randall forced it in sure field goal range. Well, it was just what we talked about. If you're going to throw the ball down here with the young quarterback, throw the fade route. Something like that. But don't make West him West throw the ball conduct. inside. Against West Virginia, penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. And Randall threw the ball inside on his own as he scrambled around. Rodriguez got it. Beamer bumming about it. He can't believe it. You're in position to win the ball game, and you make the one mistake you don't want. Throwing the ball back inside. 12 seconds left. No one can stop the clock. Think about the last two possessions for Virginia Tech. Stopped on three tries inside the West Virginia one. And then they throw the interception at the West Virginia 11. Well, they had a shot at it. I mean, if you throw a fade route to Wilford, either he catches it or it goes out of bounds. But Brian King makes a big, big play to give West Virginia their eighth win. And who'd have thought? Amazing turnaround. Congratulations to Rich Rodriguez and his West Virginia Mountaineers. Three and eight last year. They flipped it exactly. They're now eight and three this year. And for Frank Beamer and his mighty Virginia Tech Hokies, they've lost three games in a row. And if you think about the big picture, they still have Miami in December. Can they regroup, assuming Miami wins tomorrow night, can they regroup to present a challenge to Miami in December?
They must be going wild in Morgantown. As to the reaction on the field, let's go to Alex Flanagan. It absolutely is, Steve. I'm sitting here, standing here with Coach Rodriguez, who just looked at me and said, wow. wow. Walk me through two tremendous stops at the end of this game. Well, Walk me through what you I think. can't say enough for our defensive guys. You know, they really come on, you know, through all year. And then this was the first time we were challenged in this type of situation. And they really respond. I'm really proud of our young men. Talking about defense, what about offense? Pete, come in here. People are talking about the untouchables. You guys may have some untouchables of your own. Well, we got two pretty special backs in our offensive line, our quarterbacks, our tight ends, and our White House all did a great job blocking. And it's a tough environment. We had a hard time hearing sometimes and had some miscommunications, but we hung in there and got a nice win. Yes, you did. Coach Rodriguez, Thank congratulations. You. Steve, their first win here since 1992. Alex, simply amazing, and the last time that happened was also the last time Virginia Tech lost three consecutive regular season games. You look at the Big E standings, West Virginia 5-1 and one in the conference, Pittsburgh, Miami 5-0 and oh against 4-0. Somebody's going to get their first loss tomorrow night, and you'll see that game, college football Thursday night over on ESPN. 21-18 is your final score. West Virginia scores the upset here in Blacksburg. For Alex Flanagan and Rod Gilmore, this is Steve Levy. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. College basketball is coming up shortly. But right now, after this three-point thriller, we send you back to Reese Davis. Yes,